So AI is getting talked about quite a lot, you know, in current media and all of that kind of stuff. And ChatGPT in particular is one that people seem to be focusing on. I don't know, it's the most popular. So today we're going to see what AI or ChatGPT has to say about setting up a monthly bullet journal setup. Yeah, like what kind of pages should we include? What kind of decoration should we include? So we're going to see what it tells us to do as can probably be suggested by the fact that I mentioned it. Yes, we are going to be doing chat GPT today because it's one that I'm actually kind of familiar with. I'm not really familiar with other AI tools. We're not going to be using any kind of like AI generated art. It's all going to be done by me, but just dictated by chat GPT. So first of all, we need to open up chat GPT. It's probably a good place to start. So you can see we've got our chat GPT window here. I'm going to move my journal out of the way so I can actually type. So, I figured that for our setup, we're going to try and do it for June in particular. So we're going to ask it to possibly like describe a perfect June bullet journal setup. Or should we say bullet journal setup for June? We're going to say bullet journal setup for June. Bullet journal setup for June. And we'll see what it says. Hopefully it's something that I can actually do. <laughs> We'll see. Alrighty. A perfect journal setup for June would both functional and aesthetically pleasing, allowing you to stay organized and motivated throughout the month. Here's a detailed description of such a setup. We're going to need a cover page, a monthly calendar, goals and focus, habit tracker, weekly spreads, gratitude log, brainstorm and ideas, mood tracker. Oh my gosh, there's so many pages. Reflection and review. Remember the beauty of a bullet journal lies in customization. Feel free to adapt this setup according to your personal preferences and needs. Experiment with different layouts, add inspirational quotes or illustrations and make it truly your own. Fair. Alrighty, happy journaling. <laughs> so you can see that the nice part is it's just like, it, it just does it itself. <laughs> like, you know, comes up with ideas very, very quickly. Let's see what it can tell me about these things. All right, so we go to the monthly calendar, divide the page into a grid. So we're doing a grid style calendar add dates highlight important things consider using colors and categories alrighty so it says that we're going to be using vibrant colors with summer themed illustrations it says or any other design elements we're just going to pretend that that's not there because you're telling me what to do um i wonder if we can ask it to be like you know um describe you know, typical bullet journal decorations for june so hopefully it gives us a couple of ideas of what we can actually use so ooh, summer vibes incorporate summer themed illustrations we can do florals groundbreaking sun and sunshine let's see water watercolor washes oh god we are not doing watercolor <laughs> fruits and refreshing drinks seashells and mermaids outdoor activities okay so it's very much like on summer vibes and then also rainbows because you know <laughs> And then travel and adventure. Sounds good. Alrighty. So the first one that it came up with, though, was the summer vibes. And that was one that it also mentioned in our stuff at the top about all of the different pieces. We're not necessarily going to do every single one of these because that is just a lot to set up. And, you know, we, we all have lives to get to. We don't want to sit here for seven hours doing this, do we? Kidding. I mean, like, you might want to. <laughs> But let's see. So we're going to go with the summer vibes. So incorporating summer themed illustrations and colors, uh, beach scenes, palm trees, ice cream cones, sunglasses, and other symbols that evoke the sense of summertime, which of course for me is very entertaining because it's currently like getting into winter here because I'm in the Southern Hemisphere. <laughs> All right. So we've kind of got our plan. We're going to do our cover page. We're going to do a monthly calendar. We will do a golden focus, but we're going to put that with the cover page. So the cover page doesn't have to be too like a, a full spread. Um, Cause it just says, it does just say cover page. It does not say cover spread, right? Um, habit tracker we can put in weekly spreads before the gratitude log question mark. <laughs> we'll see what we get to. I love it. Yes, we do actually want to sit and watch you journal for seven hours. <laughs> yeah, maybe we'll, one day we'll do another 12 hour live stream because that was a lot of fun. Okay, so put my, put my keyboard away, get my journal ready, and we'll start doing some possibly like sketching in. So we want fun summer vibes. Okay. Oof. The last time I did any kind of summer theme actually was in winter, which is kind of funny because it was for Olaf's summer holiday or whatever I was calling it. 
or left summer vacation where he was like on the beach chilling with his snow geese and all of that. We are going to need a pencil to start because I am a big believer in starting with pencil first, mainly because otherwise I'll stuff something up. And June would be functional, aesthetically pleasing, beautiful cover page, set the tone for the month. Bright, vibrant, summer themed illustrations. So what kind of things, what kind of things would we say like think about when we're, we're, we're there use your words I like just woke up what kind of things do we think about when we think summer because I'm thinking like ice cream and I'm just like stuck on the idea of ice cream <laughs> so there's gonna be an ice cream cone in here somewhere I need I need a list I need a list uh, thankfully I have some paper here Oof. there we go grab our little notepad out and we can write down some ideas so we want ice cream sorry you can't stay but thank you for popping by other things yep flip-flops for sure or in new zealand we call them jandals 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 <laughs> picnics yep picnic vibes love it summer i was like bugs <laughs> like, i don't think that that's quite what we want sunglasses yep that was one that our chat gpt mentioned which was cool sunglasses uh oh you know you know what's a good idea? Considering the AI is supposed to help us out here, let's ask it too. Ooh, fancy drinks the umbrellas. Alrighty, let's see. Um, describe 10 types of summer doodles. Oof, describe with a giant capital E. Let's just calm down with that one. Boink. Alrighty, certainly. Here are 10 types of summer doodles. See, we don't even have to think. See, ice cream cone. I knew it. <laughs> Beach umbrella, waves, flip-flops, excellent, got it. Palm trees, watermelon, yum. Water activities, love that. Sunglasses, beach ball, beach shells, okay, yep. Yeah. So we're kind of going for like summer vibes like at the beach, <laughs> it seems. So we're going to want to add some of those things into it too. Beach ball. We've got crying because you're a Brit and you're not made with over 10 years. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, at the moment, we are kind of sitting around like a typical maybe 12 degrees Celsius to 16 degrees Celsius, like in that kind of realm. Alrighty. Beach towel. We're going to need, what else did it have? It said palm trees. That one might be better for like the, uh, I know the thing. I know what it's called the monthly log because you can kind of put it up the side of the page so we'll chuck that in though as an idea i wonder if i have any like stickers related to this we're not going to use stickers today because i couldn't bother going to try and find any <laughs> but um let's see let's see we're gonna go back to here so we've got some ideas of what we're going to include now and now we just need to kind of put them on to our page i think it would be kind of cute and i'm like i'm not sure if i can do this because I'm not very well versed in drawing sunglasses but it'd be kind of cool to have like sunglasses in the middle here that says like j-u-n-e I think that would be kind of cute and then we'll have like the little summary doodles around the outside around the outside around the outside we want the central though because otherwise it's gonna look dumb so we're gonna go with six and a half because that is half of 13 and just to mark the middle vertically as well that is nine and a half I oftentimes tend to put things slightly higher than I do lower, uh, just because I think it looks nicer on the page. I find that when I start putting things like actually smack bang center, it starts to look really low. And that might just be because a lot of the time I don't necessarily start from the actual true center of the object itself. I start maybe lower on that object, but hey. Alrighty, I'm going to need to find a reference picture, and if you are doing doodles in your <laughs> journal in general, it can be very helpful to go to something like Google and do a, an image search of like, I don't know, insert doodle name here, tutorial. So like for us it'd be like sunglasses doodle or sunglasses doodle tutorial or something like that, just so that we have an idea of what they could look like. So the ones that come up are those like I don't know what they're called. Are they called aviators? The ones that have like the bridge at the top and slightly lower? We'll see if I can draw it in so it doesn't look like weirdness. And we just use the dock grid to help us line this up. Do, do, do. So it's kind of like that kind of a shape. Maybe not quite as aggressive as I've done it. So let's put those here. And then it comes around and down. And bridges over 
to about there. That looks right, roughly. One, two, three and a half, because we want them to be the same. One, two, three and a half. And then that might have to go up a little higher, and then we might need to tweak them in a little bit. But that looks like a pretty good shape, as far as I'm concerned. Okay, it comes down like a strawberry looking shape. Nice. I know that this is probably very difficult to see. Let's see if I can zoom you in a little bit so we don't have to look at it from so far away. It has a, possibly a better, <laughs> better idea of what it actually looks like. There we go. So we're going to have our little sunglasses shapes. And then we also have to have the little, I don't know, nubbins on the sides because that's actually like where you put it over your ears. <laughs> it's probably good to have too. And then I figured we could have something like J, some kind of like block letter kind of thing, U, N, E. There we go. I think that this part here is a little too wide, uh, possibly not shallow enough. So we're going to curve these so that they come a little bit closer. And that looks a bit better, I think. Cute. Alrighty. So we've got our little kind of like summer sunglasses kind of looking thing as dictated by our AI telling us to have hashtag summer vibes only. And then we've got our list that tells us other things that we can include. So we were thinking things like our sunglasses, tick. We can think things like ice creams, flip flops, picnics, beach balls, beach towels. This one might be a little bit tricky to draw because I feel like that's like a, a whole theme by itself. But I'm thinking that like these kind of things I can probably incorporate and make them look not too out of place almost. So let's see, how do I want to do this? Because usually when I do something like a big central thing and then have stuff around the outside, I like to do kind of like a wave behind it but I'm thinking that maybe I'll just do like a random assortment around the page so we will zoom you guys out again ah if I can remember which way out is oh my lord I'll try and keep it roughly tight so that you can kind of see what we're doing one side is probably bigger than the other like this one kind of curves down a little bit more than that one does like it kind of curves out uh but this is also why I typically don't draw symmetrical shapes <laughs> because I'm not very good at making them actually symmetrical unless I'm doing tracing and then it's like not so bad. Like this one gets a little bit chubbier down the side here, but it's all good. We can fix that in post. We'll fix it in post. So we've got like a beach ball kind of looking shape here. So we'll just kind of chuck some beach balls around the page because those ones can be fairly easy to just like chuck around one two three four sounds look sounds look pretty good and some kind of jandal or flip-flop shapes so it's kind of like a weird bean shape with a little which really should be a little bit closer to one side rather than the other because your big toe is typically not the same size as the rest of your toes so little little sandaly bits here and I know that they're not quite as curved as I'm making them. I'm kind of making them more like foot shaped, but it's all good. We're just going for the general idea of it. For me, a successful doodle is one that somebody can look at it and go, oh, it's insert name here. So they look at that and they go, oh, it's a flip flop. Like it doesn't need to be perfect. And I think it's going to be cute if it's a little bit, a little bit imperfect. There we go. If you're going for quite stylized ones, you could just make them kind of like regular oval shapes. Because once you add the, I don't know, sandal straps on top of it, it's, it looks pretty much like what it's supposed to look like. We'll chuck one over here. Oh, hey, Monica. How's it going? Such a pleasure having you here with us. We're doing summer vibes only bullet journal setup for June because that's what the AI told me to do. And that's because the AI effectively just goes around the internet and sources ideas for you. And, um... <laughs> Most of the bullet journaling content that we have on the internet comes out of the Northern Hemisphere slash the States. Ice cream cone, super easy. It's just a triangle and then a like half circle on top of it. So ice cream, ice cream. And I know I just woke up, but now I kind of want an ice cream. <laughs> we could also like double scoop it to make it a little bigger if we wanted to if we want that doodle to stick out a little bit more. 
stand out. I like don't want to put the ice cream cone upside down because in my mind I'm like, oh my god, it's falling out. But everything else is kind of in random arrangements. So I feel like we have to have at least one ice cream cone that's upside down. One, two, three, and then maybe one over here too. Because I'm kind of just going with four of everything because it seems to be a safe number. Typically when I do multiple elements of things, I like to make it an odd number. Oftentimes I'll go with three. So like one, two, three on the page or something like that but <laughs> be nice to me <laughs> they're not perfect things they're sketchy as heck I see them right here sketchy like we haven't drawn any detail in on these beach balls so let's go put some beach ball details in there we go so for the beach ball details I am just putting in a smaller circle which would be like the top or the bottom I'll see if we can zoom you in so you can see what I'm doing See, there we go, this guy here. So you put a larger circle for the beach ball, like outsides, and then a smaller circle to represent the top or bottom. And then you just do some curving lines that come off that towards the outside. And this is like the, the space for the beach ball pattern. And we can color it in later. And again, it doesn't need to be perfect. It just needs to look kind of like a beach ball so that then we can color it in. People will be like, oh, look, it's a beach ball. Which is kind of cute. There we go. Same idea with this guy here. So we have our outer circle. We draw another little smaller circle inside it and then do some curving lines outside of that. Whee! I think I'm kind of trying to cut them into like maybe six to eight segments each. Some kind of even number so that then when I color it in I can have like one white, one green, one white, one red, one white, one yellow or something like that. There we go. And... This one down here. I was like, I know I have one more. We could technically have an ice cream cone where the ice cream is like falling out of or off of the uh, ice cream. But at the same time, then every time I look at my cover page, I'd be devastated. Like, no. Nah. <laughs> the world's saddest ice cream. <laughs> now we do have a lot of blank space in here. So we're going to go and add in some like smaller uh, little pieces of decoration, ones that aren't so much doodles, but like kind of just space fillers almost. So my favorite type of space filler is typically a star, but it doesn't usually work with themes that aren't kind of like, you know, star related. This one isn't so much. This one is going to be more like maybe some dots, like fun summer colored dots kind of thing which we'll probably put in with the dot pen so I don't really need to mark out where they go but we're gonna have to have like a couple in here some around the edge here and there and there which looks pretty cute summer vibes excellent I love that so what else did it tell us to do let's go and consult our list again so scroll back up it told us that we needed to have the cover page with beautiful June cover page sets the tone for the month, vibrant colors, summer themed illustrations, other design elements. We need a monthly calendar. So for a monthly calendar, we are going to flip on over to the next page. Um, and we're going to need to do, what does it say? A grid with enough space for each day of the month. Yup. And then add dates, highlight important events, yada, yada, yada. Okay. That's cool. So it really doesn't tell us very specifically how we're going to decorate things. But then when we asked it to elaborate, it did say summer vibes and other kind of stuff. So palm trees, the like. So we'll chuck in our calendar. I'm thinking that we might need, hmm, let's see. Do, do I want to put the calendar over here or over there? <sighs> Struggle. Because typically when I set up a calendar for myself, I like to have it so that I have four days of the week over here and three days of the week over here. Because when I'm writing in the Sunday, which is my last day of the week, it's a lot easier if it's not at the very edge of the page. Because especially towards the start of the notebook, my hand has to like hover and then my handwriting gets messy and it's meh. Uh, we don't really want that. So we're instead going to possibly do it that way so that it's going to be all right. Um, we've also got ideas of sunshine. All right, we could possibly put some sunshine in here. Let's put our calendar grid in first. When I like to set up my calendar grid, I usually use three centimeter by three centimeter boxes because it's just the size that is comfortable for me. Um, and we're going to need to go have a look at the calendar of June so that we get this right. So we got four, four, yeah, so three days missing, then four. So it starts on Thursday. That makes me tempted to put the four days over here. 
<laughs> and it's going to go down five weeks, which is 15 centimeters. Centimeters. There we go. And I'm not planning on drawing in the full thing here. I'm just drawing in some guidelines for myself because one, two, three. I don't see the point of drawing out the full grid because that's like just time costly. I like to put in some guides so I know where I need to start and stop and all of that kind of thing. But I don't need to put in every single line. Three, six, nine, twelve. And then it finishes on this Saturday, which means it's here. There we go. And we will put this one in just so that then I know where to stop the calendar. It also means I know where my decoration can go, which is good. So this guy here, it's going to start in this third line. And we're going to do 6, 9, 12, 15. Looks good. And then across, we only need to go across by three boxes. So that's nine centimeters. Done. And we'll just put some put some lines down the side here too, just to make sure that we know exactly where we're starting. There we go. Cute. Okay, so that's where our calendar is going to go. I said don't need to put every single line in because we're just gonna <laughs> we're just gonna go and rule over the top of it later anyways. So ooh, okay, so we could do some sunshine to fill the blank space on the cover page possibly I don't want it to get too crowded though I kind of like the idea of having individual elements on this one but I wouldn't be opposed to doing a sunshiny type thing over here I think that would be kind of cute like if we had the sun up the top here and it kind of just filters down and then the calendar itself is in white or like blank and then the background is in color I think that that would actually look really cool and we could do it with the distress oxide inks if we wanted to I know I said we weren't going to use anything too fancy, but it might be a good excuse to, to crack them out, especially because I've got like a fun kind of, a fun kind of yellow and a fun kind of orange. That could be kind of cute. Alrighty. We want our little sun in the corner. I say little. I'm going to make it big. Let's see. The only issue with using the distress oxides is, one, what color do I do the sun? We're going to need bigger than that because I don't, I don't. I actually just want it to be the corner of the sun as well. Mm, these ones are all too small. We're going to need something bigger. We need to go bigger. Here's my math and that. So we have a couple of options here. <laughs> we could use my helix, but it's kind of hard to see how big it, that will actually be. Or we could use my Mathemat, but then the sun will be low-key massive. Uh, could work out. Doesn't like look the most horriblest. Like that. And then it filters down. Like it is a big corner to fill. So it's not the worst thing ever. And if we do it like that, then we also have some nice dividers already for where I can put my tape which I do kind of appreciate. Okay, okay, we're gonna need something a little bit stabbier. Where is my mechanical pencil? Anybody know any affordable quality notebooks for Central Europe? Um, I don't, personally. Maybe some of our other viewers will be able to help you out. I mean, um, let's see, Paper 24 Bujo is really good quality. Is String and Space from the UK? And your Bujo, I think both of them are possibly UK based from vague recollections. I might be wrong though, I could just be talking schmack, but um, I think that they might be. Yeah, and, and of course you can get ones off Amazon for sure. Um, so these little dividers here are just to help us get it so that the uh, rays of sunshine are roughly the same size as each other, uh, because I would like them to be roughly the same size. And it also means that I can use the where the central corner is and kind of line my ruler up and then divide the page nice and evenly. It'll just look a little better. What I don't like is when people do this is not like not me having a go at them. Let's just put it that way. But when people do a kind of sunshine corner, but then then the lines don't all come out of the center. So they end up kind of looking like this. 
especially this guy here where you get like this thinning because it's obviously not on the right trajectory. It's like not coming from the center. It's coming from just like some random place on the other side of the page. Whereas everything else kind of comes from the center. Because we want everything to kind of radiate from a single point. And for us, our single point is the mystery corner over here. So we're probably not going to be too precise with it, but we are going to try and be some precise with it. Yay for some precise. <laughs> I am going to have to see how getting the tape to not overlap at the top will be a little interesting, but that's a future us problem. <laughs> and then I guess for the headers in here, it doesn't say anything specific because we're going to be putting the ink down on the page. I might avoid putting too much other decoration. I don't want it to look too busy. Um, but we might try and do some kind of something nice with the font or we could <laughs> this is just me musing um we did do block letters here so maybe block letters can be the thing that we kind of carry throughout which would be a nice way to just tie the pages together a little bit especially because we're going to have such color heavy stuff here and maybe not as much here so we could do we could do some something in here. Hmm, hmm, hmm. all righty let us go consult our list so according to our list We've got our cover page tick. We've got our monthly calendar tick. We have our goals and focus. Dedicate a page to outline your goals and focus areas for the month. Write down what you want to achieve and set clear objectives. You can also include a section for monthly affirmations or motivational quotes to keep you inspired. So I'm going to do that on this. No, get out. This page here. I forgot that I was already on it. This page is from our last challenge that we were doing where we did like a reset up of an old journal layout. That's not what we're doing today. So... Let's see, it says we can have a, what we want to achieve, set clear objectives, section for monthly affirmations or motivational quotes. Alrighty. So I'm kind of thinking that I want to have all of those. <laughs> and I think we're going to do like a banner at the top for the header. And then I think that in that banner, we could possibly use the distress oxide again so that then it ties into our monthly cover page, monthly cover page, no, monthly log. And then the rest of the page we can split into four so that we can have like the outline of what we want to achieve, the steps that we need to take to get there. And then the, uh, I'm thinking of a word. Can't remember what it is though. <laughs> the other thing. <laughs> All right. I'm going to do that much space. No, this much, this much is good. And I want to do. because then that would be the header. Yeah, the header, the header can be four dock grid spaces. And then the boxes underneath that can be slightly less. Half of 16 is eight. There we go. So those are my boxes. And we're going to actually put the divider in the middle so that we have the same amount of division space throughout. And then in one of them, we can specify what the goals are, like what do we actually want to achieve. In the other one, we can specify what steps are we taking to get there. In one of them, we can put some kind of motivational quote. And I kind of want it to be summer related, like motivational, but about summer. And then in this one, we can put a little space for like my monthly affirmations so they can read over every time they come back to their goals page. And then this can be like the goals header. That's nice and easy. Okay, done. And then... <laughs> Let's see. I'm like, I know right now we're just putting things in pencil, so I don't want to get like too ahead of myself and then be like, oh my gosh, we have so much to set up. But the next one is a habit tracker. And then we also had a mood tracker and different colors and symbols. What does it say? It's like different colors and symbols for so a corresponding space each day. But it doesn't tell us what kind of decorative element to use. And then the habit tracker identify habits you want to cultivate. Rah, rah, rah. Draw a grid with the habits listed on one side and the dates on the other. Alrighty, so this one is specifying that we need to draw a grid. That one is going to be time costly because it's a grid. <laughs> like, what's a good breakfast fruit that's not a banana? Apples? Yeah, no, that makes sense. I, I'm not sure. I, I mm, Now I want apples. <laughs> so that's our weekly spreads. Okay. Maybe for now, before we get too ahead of ourselves, we're going to set up the ones that we have specified here. 
and I kind of said that for the sunshine one, I want to use orange and yellow. So we're probably going to use orange and yellow dots on this page if I can find some. Now, I literally was talking with Monica yesterday about the fact that they have a really good yellow dot pen. They don't actually have a very good orange dot pen. So I might have to do yellow dots with my dot pen, like twink, 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 twink. And then in amongst that, I can use my uh, just like Tombows to put in the rest of them. Should I have gone in and done these dots first? Absolutely not. I should have waited until I had done the actual like doodle decoration just in case the shape of them changes or anything like that. But we're here now and we've already started. So haha for us. <laughs> also, we are about 30 minutes in. So if you haven't already, Tink, it's time to take a drink. Mm -mm. We have the island coral, but you know it's not a it's not a true orange. It's a lie. <laughs> Probably because it's a coral. There we go. Alright, I'm gonna need a drawing pen. Ooh, choices. I think I'll go with see I've really been enjoying doing it with the uh Tombow Fudinoske pen. Just because I kind of like the variation in the line width. So I think I might do that for this one. Oh, here's an idea. Okay. So I was wondering about how to bring in the uh distress oxide ink to my cover page in particular. Maybe what I could do is I can kind of mask off the outside area of our glasses and then put the distress oxide inside the glasses or something like that. That could be possibly kind of cute. So we'll chuck in our little ice creamy cone. I don't know why I always like to draw the little kind of lip because it feels like where the ice cream is kind of melting. <laughs> Here we go. Boink. We'll do some details on here because it's a waffle cone, of course. Otherwise, what was the point? <laughs> I really like waffle cones. Um, that looks good. And we'll draw in one of our little jandals here. We'll go with its little no strap things. Is that a little too far forward? Possibly. I'm sure that the hypothetical person that is wearing this jandal won't mind. <laughs> or if they do, they can get over it. <laughs> Let's see. There we go. I'd love to know though, are you guys more of a fan of summer or winter or spring or autumn kind of a thing? But like, do you prefer warmer months and seasons or do you prefer cooler months and seasons? Personally, I get overheated way too easily and I find it really hard to cool down again. So my preference is for cooler months because then I can like wear my hoodie, get all snuggly and stuff, get all comf. But I'd be curious to see what the general consensus is because I feel like summer gets, and maybe it's just a bias, summer seems to get a lot of praise and poor little winter's sitting there just like, I exist too. Well, let's see, we've got, oh yep, 100% cooler, we've got cooler months, warmer summer months, fair, fair, fair. Because I, I know that like, what is it, seasonal affective disorder or something, the sad? Because I know that for some people like cooler months just completely plummet their mood whereas for me I'm just like if it's hot and I'm bothered I'll be like heck to the nah this is not for me not the vibe because <laughs> I always say it's like one of those things that like you can only take off so many layers before it's like ma'am please put your clothes back on <laughs> there we go little Jean dolls we're going to need to pick out some colours to colour in our little Jean dolls. And I'm thinking that we're going to want, obviously, like, orange and yellow as part of our colour palette because that's what we've been doing or said we're going to do for the sunshine. But then we're also going to want some other kind of contrasty colours. So I was thinking maybe some kind of, like, a bright blue type thing. And yeah, we'll put that over there. 
Is that six? Yes, that is six. I think the typical beach balls actually have like eight segments or something, but it's fine. People know what it's supposed to be. It's obviously a rainbow coconut, right? <laughs> like a coconut with stripes. There we go. That's cute. Then our little sandal over here. Because we could have probably added in some more uh, doodles to the cover page. Like, if we didn't want to just go and fill space with dots type of a thing, we could have added things like, I don't know, like a, like a bucket for making sandcastles and a little, like, sandcastle shovel, whatever those things are called. Like a trowel or something. And all of those kind of things. Mmm. I understand the appeal of the beach, but I'm not really a fan of sand. <laughs> like it just kind of gets in everything. Um, also, I think maybe I've just been like traumatized one too many times of having a, uh, you know, you get out of the car and you're walking down to the beach, but the sun has been like superheating the sand and it just completely scorches your feet. And you're like, cool, this is what I wanted for summer. <laughs> like third degree burns on the bottom of my feet. I know it's not actually that bad, but it is. It was not fun. So you run down to the actual water to put your feet into the, the cooler sand. Um, which is just just a little bit more pleasant compared to the, I don't know, aggressive sand that you've got where it's all super, super hot. But um, I don't know if it's just like a me thing, but half the time that I'd get into the water especially with the really super fine sand it felt slimy <laughs> like and i know that it probably wasn't actually slimy but on my feet that is the best way that my small person mind could describe it so eventually i had to get some aqua booties so that then i could go into the water and not have to feel the sand itself i could like feel the coolness of the water which was nice but not the uh, not the sand because I remember one time my friends and I went to the beach and uh, you know messing around in the shallow kind of area and then I stood on a sea urchin or something or like something spiky as heck I don't know and um, so then I cry out in pain and then she came over to see how I was going she's like oh what's wrong and then she stood on it so we're both just like in pain with like sore feet because we stood on a bloody sea urchin or sea urchin equivalent. I have no idea where sea urchins actually live. Okay, we've done all of the small decorations, which means now it's time for the bigger one, which is the one that I am distinctly more worried about because they don't seem to be the same size. Like this part is especially not in the same area. One, two, three, four and a half. Two, three, four and a half. So they are technically, technically in the same place. We might draw one side and then see if we can mimic it on the other so i'm gonna do it this way because it might be a little easier for me Whee. just turn the journal so that it's easier to draw in there are certain directions that your hand will go and ones that your hand doesn't want to go try to make this line up as nicely as possible beautiful okay so those are our rough sunglasses shapes. I'm just gonna color this in black like that. Go. And now we wanna do that on the other side. I wonder if I can trace it. It might be the easiest way to go about it. I used to have actual tracing paper, but I got rid of it, so. Okay, I can just see through that. What you can do if you don't have a light pad is just put your phone behind it, like turn the brightness of your phone up and let that shine through the back of the page. But because I've got this light on, um, it makes it a little bit harder to do that. Let's see. Dun, dun, dun. We're going to see if I can show you what I mean. Like if I put my light here and I turn this guy off, possibly, like you might be able to just kind of see it. 
Come on, phone. Ah, oh, the brightness turned down on my phone. <laughs> there we go. You can kind of see the outline there. You can also see all of the icons that just popped up, though. So you need to do it in a way that, like, you're the, well, bright touchpad of your um phone doesn't actually light up any. But I'm just going to see if I can do this roughly at least. So that we get like kind of the rough size correct because if the size is wrong that'll just bother me. Yeah this one's a bit harder to see but it's roughly there. Alrighty. Pew, 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 pew. And if you do this in a lead that's a little bit softer and a little bit darker it's going to transfer a little bit better. So we're going to grab a different pencil. This guy looks like he's a little bit softer because typically the pencils that I use, I use a lead that is quite light. It's like a harder lead so it doesn't transfer to the page quite as much. Whereas this guy here has a slightly darker lead so it'll transfer a little bit better. Transfer and we're just going to fold it there so I know where the edge of the glasses is. <laughs> And I feel like I'm going to need to put a little, like, marker. Marker? There we go. That's where the corner is. So I know where the corner is. I can put the corner here. So hopefully that looks roughly in line. The thing is that I don't necessarily want to erase the stuff underneath it, just in case. So. Yeah. Hopefully this gives me some kind of a guideline, a rough outline as to where things are supposed to be. Yeah, I mean, I think it lined up fairly well. You can see that that edge obviously ballooned out a little bit differently. And there's the nub and bit. But the curve at the top seems to be pretty much in line with where we were before. And this guy just came over a little bit more. Well, actually didn't come over quite as much interesting i mean at the end of the day like <laughs> this isn't going to be my actual setup because i've already done my setup for june you may have seen it already uh so this one actually curves down to about there yep we and it curves around there are so many lines i really should have erased some of them but i did and now we're here It's roughly correct. All is well. And there's our little flip, flick out bits. The parts where our... I'm trying to call them handles, but it's not what I mean. <laughs> the parts of the glasses that actually allow you to put them on. Alrighty, that looks cute. I know that this is not quite right, and that is a little bit more pointed, but it's all good. We can draw the strap part that goes across here. Just neaten it up a little bit, just applying a little bit more pressure to the to the pen so that then it makes a thicker line. There we go. Cute. That is a little bit thicker on one side. Is this going to be one of those like you know those um? I guess they kind of memes where people are trying to put on winged eyeliner and one side gets really big so then they have to make the other side bigger but then that one's too big so they make the other side bigger so on and so forth yeah that can be a little bit problematic eh it's fine it's all good oh thank you for being here while you could be it was a pleasure to have you here with us so I guess the question here is, do I put the text in before or after I go in with my inking? And I'm thinking that I'm going to do the inking first. Now, to make it so that we don't end up going outside of the lines, we are going to have to mask the page. And to do that, we are going to get out some old washi tape. Yeah. All right. Come along, old washi tape. By that I mean I need to go find some. <laughs> We're gonna use this one. No, not that one. Ooh, choices. That one. No. Oh, okay, this one. Okay. It honestly doesn't matter, but <laughs> we're gonna use this washi tape. 
And we need my box of Distress Oxide inks. And in particular, I want to use dabbers, not hair. Ew, get out. Dabbers. And I'm going to use the Fossilized Amber, which is the yellow color. And I'm going to use the Spiced Marmalade, which is an orange color. So, squeak, squeak, there's my chair. So we're going to put the tape down first to mask off the page. And considering we've got this out, we might as well do the part at the top over here too. So that one's nice and easy because it's just a straight line. <laughs> but the glasses are going to be a little bit trickier because they are obviously not very straight. What we could do, which might be a little bit easier than just like taping around and around and around, is getting out a craft knife and just putting in some kind of like tape pieces over each of the edges. Ouch. Yeah. I'm having a hard time here because it's on a bend. So... I'll show, I'll show you what I mean. So we put the tape over the top of the larger edges and then just cut away the internal parts because it might just be a little easier. So we do it kind of like that. Especially because we have such nice thick black lines, it'll be quite easy to see where they're going. And put that one there. And we'll put this one smack bang in the middle. That was a very large piece of tape. Waste, but... And we're going to put that one there. And we will put two other pieces, one on one side and one on the other. So now as the tape is kind of all over the glasses, which is not quite what we want, <laughs> we're just going to get out my craft knife and cut away the parts that are inside of the glasses. So we still have the tape around the outside, but not on the inside. Favorite ice cream? Um... The first one that comes to mind is actually lemon gelato because like lemon gelato is absolutely just glorious. It's pretty much the one that I will always get when we go for any kind of like ice creamy thing if they've got it. Otherwise, I quite like like coffee ice cream. Coffee ice cream is really good. Uh, the one that I buy from the supermarket most often though is a maple walnut. That one's pretty good too. Um, I'm not really a fan of chocolate. Vogel likes chocolate ice cream, but I personally don't enjoy it as much when you're doing this make sure that you are careful we don't want to one slip and cut something we shouldn't aka your finger or aka <laughs> other parts of the tape um we just want to make sure that we're really going along the edge and you also don't want to apply too much pressure because you don't want to cut through your notebook because that's not quite what we were looking for in terms of this setup i mean it might be kind of cute if you wanted to do a uh it's not really a Dutch door, more like a cutout. You could cut out the glasses completely and have something behind them, which would be quite cute. But yeah, yeah. See, I was like moving towards the vibe. That's like literally what I was going for, eh? It's going to be kind of like a, a little, little like orange to yellow kind of ombre moment. I'm hoping. We'll see what I can achieve because, you know, I'm just, I'm just kind of winging it here. But that's looking pretty good. But yeah, we're just being... Very careful because we don't want to remove tape that we shouldn't because otherwise we will end up with uh, ink where we don't want the ink to be. Now these dabbers are not necessarily small. You can kind of see the size of the dabber compared to the size of the glasses. So we want to be either very careful when we come to edges like this or we could lay down another piece of tape to give us a little bit more coverage. I'll kind of finish cutting this out first and then we'll see if I need anything like that. Oh, don't go too far. We literally just talked about that. It's one of those, like, you just kind of let your hand go on autopilot and then your hand stuffs up and you're just like, whoa, that's not what I wanted at all. What are you doing? This is not how we roll in the Shire. It's not how we roll in the Shire. Thank you. We can just put that there. Eee, protection. Done. Yeah, just use the parts that we cut out to protect other parts of the page rather than using more tape because, you know, we don't want to waste our masking tape, tape that we are using for masking, which, I mean, I know that some people, when I use the tapes for doing the masking trick, they're like, why are you wasting that beautiful washi tape? And I'm like, I'm glad you like it, but it's really not for me. <laughs> like, 
Each of us have different preferences. My type preferences do not involve this type. There we go. Peel off that larger piece too. We can probably put that on the side here so that then we have a little more protection. Ooh, pistachio. Yum! Already, You know, I'm, I haven't even had breakfast and now I want ice cream. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so we've got a larger piece here. Um, we can possibly stick that somewhere if if the tape gods let us. I don't know if this is cut the whole way through. Let me just go slice a little more. Slice a little more. Slice a little more. Do 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 do. Do 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 do. There we go. I'll give it like an eyebrow piece. <laughs> Excellent. Not so excellent. Get out of there. So that's looking pretty swell. I think it's looking pretty good at least. I might add a little bit more tape up at the top here just because I don't trust <laughs> myself to not stuff that up. There we go. I can just... Ugh. There you go. Eyebrow pieces. <laughs> so we've got just a little extra protection. And then we can start to look at doing our inking. Hmm, do I want to add just a little more tape around the outside? Because I'm thinking that, like, I want yellow to go here, and then this will be kind of transition land, and then this will be orange land. And if I'm doing that, I'm worried that I might go a little bit further over than I mean to. It's one of those things that I'm like, just, just put the tape down, Jess. Just put the tape down. Because I would rather put the tape down and not have to have used it, and then be like, oh, well, a little bit of waste, rather than something like not putting the tape down them being pissy because I got <laughs> orange somewhere where I didn't want it to be or yellow or whatever etc so we're just taping it up just taping it up a little bit because again like I have so many washi tapes that I am just not using um they're in my you know bonus tape bonus tape box as I'm gonna call it or like space where I keep tapes that I'm not using this part has a hole so we're going to put one over the hole here. I don't think there's a hole there. I think that's okay. Just in case. Just in case. There we go. Safe, 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 safe. But yeah, so I have so many bonus tapes that I just am not using. So I might as well just use this one a little bit more to be a little bit safer. So I'm more secure in putting my inking down. This one, though, rather than putting tape along, like, the, the top edge or anything like that, I usually just get a piece of paper and slip it underneath. So we're going to grab a paper, a larger piece of paper, so that it's actually big enough for what we're doing here. Oh, yeah, I can use one of those. Alrighty. We'll grab a piece of paper out of here. I moved my little drawers on my desk around so that I could more easily access this paper stash. And... It's okay, except for the fact that I keep putting my drink bottle in front of it. So it works some of the time. Here's a notepad. The impact of a great teacher can never be erased. And of course, it sounds a little bit poncy, so I don't ever really use it. So I've got plenty to use now. <laughs> so this one just helps us to protect the, uh, the pages below this one to make sure that nothing happens to it. We're doing this one first because it's easier and we're gonna go in first with the orange and we're gonna say orange to yellow that way. Now, on the bottom of these, I have a little Velcro dot that I've stuck on so I can keep the dabber with the um, ink pad. It just makes it a little easier. And we'll Velcro that to his little dabber here. And we will do the same with the fossilized amber. There we go. Poink, 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 poink. And we'll put this here for our dabbers. Because I don't want to sit them on my desk. <laughs> now, like we said, we're going to do orange first. We'll take the lid off the yellow as well. Um, I don't know if you guys can hear that, but it sounds gross. <laughs> and we'll just put... There we go, nice little kind of gradient-esque kind of moment. So we'll kind of like fade it out to the side here. That looks pretty cute. And we can probably put some down on this side too, just because we've got that one out. There's a hole. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. 
pero ya yeah. I want to make that part quite orange so that then the gradient effect that we're working with here is quite obvious. Just a little bit of the orange into there. Oi, stay. No moving. <laughs> and then we'll get some yellow. You have to use your label making last time to put labels on your containers. Oh, excellent. I love home organization. I don't do enough of it, but I really love like I, I watched all of the home edit and like part of that show kind of annoyed me because they seemed like and I, I don't think it's necessarily true but in some of their interactions they seemed a little fake and one of them kept talking over the top of the other and that kind of peeved me off a little bit but the general kind of organization process and all of that and like watching everything go into containers and things put in rainbow water and everything I'm just like ah my soul is happy right blend that in a little bit more buff 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 <laughs> buff buff dab buff and we can put some over here as well there we go and some in there we might try and saturate that orange up a little bit because the fossilized amber is quite a golden yellow color so to make it kind of pop a little more we might put a little more orange in <laughs> that looks pretty cute just a little bit a little bit here i think that looks pretty good eh um we're gonna need a little more orange up there though i think because I think that this orange is a little bit too stuck in this corner. Squint, squint, squint. I know that's probably not a very, um, a very nice kind of a uh, sound. Oh, what you had to check out twenty spices? Yeah, that's that sucks. Um, I I don't know. It's one of those things that like I think that use by dates for some items are very loose recommendations, <laughs> or at least I treat them like they are. Some things not so much. Like milk, you should probably probably get rid of that uh when it tells you to but stuff like spices i'm just like i'll just add more of it it's just lost intensity right i don't know this is looking cute but you see how masking the page off gives us that really nice crisp line oh the crisp line makes my soul happy now we need to try and remove all of the tape on this guy and that's gonna be a bit more fun and we just hope and pray that we haven't left any gaps that i wasn't aware of also, getting the tape off my fingers is a nightmare. <laughs> like, There's so much tape in my bin as well. It's all just kind of stuck on top of each other. Eee. There we go. But I, I just, yeah, we needed something to bring the color palette into the cover page, though. Otherwise, everything else would have the orange and it would just look a little strange. Yeah, dairy equals listen to the date. Spice, maybe don't. <laughs> like, there we go. Oh, cute. And I mean, yes, sure, we could have done this with Tombos. Like, you can do that. I just really like the, like, even coverage that you can achieve with the Distress Oxide inks. Um, like, if we wanted to, we could go and, like, spray the page with some water and get that kind of, like, um, I don't know water sprayed effect I suppose. Uh, I'm not going to just because I don't want to have any of my other colors run and stuff like that but I also kind of just like the almost matte finish that we've achieved here like almost almost matte but um <laughs> this little guy is annoying to me. I feel like I might need to go and fix him up a little bit but now as we've got those in though I'm thinking we need to go and play around with some other colors now, I said that I wanted to have possibly a blue, so maybe like an orange. We've got a yellow and an orange and then maybe a blue color. That might be a nice kind of uh, combination, I suppose. It feels summery, at least, in my mind. Um, and then we could have like 
some blue dots rather than orange dots because I don't have a good orange pen, but I do have a nice pale blue one that would work quite well. Um, whose journal are we doing? This is the hypothetical persons. I know that we've talked about a name for the hypothetical person, but we haven't actually given them a name, so we're just going to call her Sandra. <laughs> like, yeah, this is just my R&D Bujo, but we're just setting it up as based on what the AI told us to do. So we've got our, like, summary doodles and all of that kind of thing. I'm going to, I mean, the code I feel like has to be brown. Like, it, I mean, it doesn't have to be, but I, I just want it to be. Um, and this is one of my favorite browns, so we can just start with that. Ice cream cones. But then I thought, yeah, we could do like a nice kind of like paler but bright blue to go with our orange and yellow. I think that would look very summer vibes and fun. And then we can get out the blue dot pen and put in some more dots around the outside. Around the outside, around the outside. There we go. So cones are done. Nice and easy. <laughs> you're you're going to call her Emma. Emma? Emma? Emma Imaginary. Emma. Uh, dot pen, dot pen, dot pen. I need a better storage case for my dot pens because this one is quite full. <laughs> Allie the AI. Yes, Allie. Allie told us to do this, so this can be Allie's journal. AI, AI. I mean, I always read the I as an L, so it makes it like it's like Al. <laughs> like, so this is the blue that I was kind of thinking. So we have some more kind of dots around that to bring in the blue color. And it's just a nice easy way to fill space, honestly, because like you just apply different amounts of pressure to get different sizes of dots. Just make sure that you don't, I, I have a tendency to do this, go too fast with it and then you end up kind of like not necessarily smudging your dot, but you don't necessarily take the pen all the way away from the page before you go to draw the next one. So you end up with like more of a smudge or an oval. Okay, so I had a dream last night that I went back to school and like this was a school that I went to when I was in Australia when I was in like year eight kind of a thing. So I haven't been at this school for many moons. And um, and I had, had a dream that I went back to like finish off my high school diploma. Not that I didn't get one, but I'm just like, okay, cool. But I was in like a boarding school and I'm just like, why would you want this? Like I was my current age at a boarding school trying to finish off my high school degree, whatever. And I'm just like, this doesn't make any sense because why would I want to do this? Because I was kind of like, as part of the dream, I was went to see the like careers advisor and they're like, excellent. So like, what are you studying? Like, rah, rah, what do you want to do? And I'm just like, I've already got a degree. Like, why am I here? <laughs> like, this doesn't make any sense. I don't know if anybody else has those kind of, I don't know, is it a nightmare? It wasn't like scary. But it was kind of like, just, a oh, what the fuck are you doing? Like, why are you wasting time here trying to go back and redo calculus? <laughs> Pink could be cute to include in our color palette. Once I've done the blue on these balls, I'm going to get out a little scrap of paper and we can start looking at how we might bring in other colors. Because I don't want to make the color palette too crazy, but I think that a pink would actually be a nice addition to this. Scribble, scribble, scribble. Plus, I think pink for an ice cream color might be kind of nice. Scribble, 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 scribble. This is not a good coloring pen. Like, I have a Tombow that is this color, and I should have just used that. But here we are. Scribble, 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 scribble. Alrighty. Yeah, like, going back to high school or elementary, because you, like, need to retake a course, but you don't, actually. It's like, what the heck? <laughs> so... In terms of color, we've got this blue, which I do actually have like another pen for. We're gonna have this yellow, which is also another one that I have a Tombow for. We have uh, maybe this orange. Scroll, scroll, scroll. This kind of orange color, roughly, or maybe we'll go with 933 instead of 925. I think 933 might work a little better. Scroll, scroll, scroll. 
Yeah, that looks more akin to what we've actually got, doesn't it? This one looks a little too cool tone. Yeah. Okay, this orange. And we're going to want a pink, possibly. Pink, 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 pink. I feel like I want it to be like a punchy pink, like a brighter pink, but I don't think this is the right color pink. Let's put you over here. Oh, okay. It's not too bad. Like that kind of, that kind of palette. Let's see. This pink might be a little too cool tone for me as well. Where is my journal? <laughs> me constantly. Like my, my, my like desk just needs a giant tidy up. But I've got the sub box sitting out so that I can do my uh, sneak videos, which I need to make a couple more of. So, Okay, Tombos are right, right, right in the back. Right, right, right in the back. So I think that the pink that I probably want to go for is, yeah, the 7, 7 4, 3 rather than 703 because 703 just looks a little bit too, I don't know. It doesn't look right. I'm going to go with 743 instead, which is a little bit more punchy, like in terms of a pink but I think that it looks a little bit nice. <coughs> Squeeze me. Let's see. Ooh, a question. How was the rest of your Sunday? Not too bad. Went to went to the expo, got to see some stuff, made no purchases, but it's fine because it was free entry, so I didn't feel bad about it. <laughs> All right, where's my pencil? Ow, get off, get off my mouse. Alrighty, question we had. What bullet journals are best for more colourful artistic doodles and themes? Dealing with tons of ghosting and bleeding through your pages. Oof, that's a shame. It'd be good to know what journal you're currently using um, so that our recommendations can be more pointed. Um, I find that anything that has like 160 is fine. Like pretty much any journal that you can get that has 160 GSM is usually fine. Um, you don't get any ghosting through the pages on that one at all. Um... I have tried a couple that were lower, that were okay. But yeah, just anything that has like 140 or more is usually safe. Sometimes you can get away with 120. It just depends on like how much, how much ghosting really bothers you. Ooh, that's nicer. I like that better. That's a nice vibrant pink. We're going with that one. <laughs> Beautiful. I'm just going to colour in. And the nice part is also is that because we use the Tombow Fudenoske, that one is a water-resistant pen and Tombow brush markers are uh, water-based. So having it be, uh, what's the word? Having it be water-resistant means that our Tombow dual brush markers don't pick up the Fudenoske black. It stays in place. It's good. We like this. Squirk, squirk, squirk. Scrink, scrink, scrink. That looks cute. I don't think I want all of the jandals to be pink, though, because then this pink segment's a little too close to that for my liking. And I'm not sure yet, though. Oh, I could. It's just that, like, we have one, two, three, and that might look a little odd. Maybe I'll do this one in pink, and then the other two can be, like, orange or something <laughs> they don't all have to be the same color i do want some of my ice creams to be yellow though because i think that that would be nice in terms of like a very aggressive version of a lemon flavor <laughs> it can be like a, a lemon meringue pie flavor there we go lemon ice cream and then this can be an orange jandle or orange flip-flop Yay! This is actually pretty cute. Like, not to say that I didn't think it was going to be, it's just, you know, I was a little bit apprehensive as to uh, what the AI would suggest we actually do in terms of the setup. So I think that the suggestions for the doodles and the idea of the theme overall is not a bad one. There we go. Put a little orange on our beach balls. Orange can go here, 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 and orange can go down with this one. There we go. And we'll put some yellow on the other beach ball segments. That would be yellow. I feel like that one needs to be orange now because I don't want it to be pink. <laughs> there we go. 
Love it. E. Only right feats? Yes. It's it's just one of those unfortunate things that like all of these people went to the beach and just have the, the right jandal has been lost. It's like there's like a right foot sandal bandit. <laughs> The right foot sandal bandit has struck again. Oh no. <laughs> We're gonna do a pink ice cream on this one. Because yeah, with the ice cream flavors, I'm just gonna do a random assortment of the colors. So we'll do a pink one on this one. And then instead of yellow, we might do like I don't know, do we want a blue ice cream? We'll have one blue ice cream. And yes, I could get out my actual Tombow and it might just be a little easier. But I'm being lazy. I don't want to turn around and get my pen. Does anybody else have that level of laziness? It'll be like, I'm thinking about something that I had in a past journal. So I will scroll and scroll and scroll through Instagram to find a picture of the page I want to look at. Rather than getting out of my chair, walking across my office and getting out the journal that actually has that page. I'm just like, Jess, what the heck? Like, just do better. <laughs> What are you doing? Just do better. There we go. Orange on this one. So this can be like a little mango flavored one or something. A little, little summon summon. And then this one can be lello flavored. Maybe it's like a lemon or a pineapple-y kind of thing. I kind of want you to be yellow. And I want this one down the bottom to be blue. Yeah, the right foot convention. There we go. Plink, plink, plink. I have super saturated the page here, so we'll see if I get any bleed through from that because I just put a lot of dottings down. Nah, we're all good. Bam. This is very cute. Okay, so we're going to want to write June in the sunglasses so that this is actually a June cover page. Otherwise, it's just sunglasses. And should we risk it <laughs> and just go in with, like, out putting any lines in? Yep, let's do it. Okay, I'm going to do N first. And we're going to do N here. N. That looks kind of cool. We're fine with that. There we go. There's an N. Looks reasonable. And then E. And the E should come out to about here, methinks. And to make it easier, let us turn the page. <laughs> so that I can keep my lines relatively straight. I'm not very good at drawing horizontal lines uh, straight. But vertical lines I'm usually kind of okay with. So that looks pretty good. I don't know if we've necessarily come over far enough. But you can always fix that up. Oh, so cute pretty happy with that <laughs> there we go nah i don't even want to do the j and the u because they're both curved and it's just going to be harder <laughs> but i think it's going to be cute okay i also think that we we came a little bit too far over with my um with my tape so there's actually a little white line here so i'm just going to very gently touch it up with my tombow so now it's blending a little bit better this is looking cute. Okay. Doing the U. Doing the U. We're getting it done. So that was like there-ish. And it came over two. And it went down to about there. Okay. Oh, that was a bit cattywampus, but it's fine. I always find the turn of the uh, curved letters to be harder, especially the internal turn, because you want it to be kind of uniform in terms of size, but struggles. Duh. Alrighty, and J, okay, we do want the J to come out to about here, but not much further over than that, because we want it to look fairly uniform with the other side. So the J comes to about here, and it'll go to about there. So we'll go down and around and around and around and around. Yay! That went a little bit lower than I expected, but it's fine. 
it's a little bit lower than I had initially anticipated, but I think that it's not too bad at all. <laughs> so what we're pretty much saying is ChatPT is going on. Yep, pretty much. I think that it's, it's, it's one of those tools that can be very useful, but it also doesn't necessarily get things right every single time, you know? Um, every so often I go in and I say like, hey, can you explain to me like insert topic here that I already kind of know about? And it's like, it sounds good enough to be convincing, but it isn't always correct uh, because it is just like an amalgamation of everything that I can find on the internet. So it's like not always 100%. Um, but it can be a really useful starting place for things. Uh, so like if you're stuck on bullet journal theme ideas, you can just be like, hey, chat GPT, give me five theme ideas for June or something like that. And you can be like, here, gladly. I mean, in fact, we, we, we did just that, didn't we? We asked it what theme ideas we had. Oh yeah, when it comes to decorating a bullet journal for theme, there are several theme elements that are commonly associated with this month. And then it just gives us some typical ones. Seashells and mermaids, beautiful. Outdoor activities, fruits and refreshing drinks. But yeah, so it can be quite useful in that respect. For this one, because this is a goals list, I am not going to go in and do a G of my own accord because it will end up looking dumb. So I'm going to pencil this one in first because I don't want it to look stupid. But while penciling it in, I do need to be kind of careful because it's a little bit harder to erase uh, things over the top of this. So there, the G will look like that. Every other letter I think I'll be totally fine with, but the G is not going to be as easy. Uh, thank you for being here. Well, you could be. I hope you sleep well. We. G, 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 G. There we go. G is for goals. O. And then A. When I do an A, I usually like to do the outer edge first so that I can kind of see the general shape of it and then do the kind of more internal parts like the, the bridge, the A and stuff. This makes it a little easier, IMO. A, which is like our A ended up a little fat, but it's all right. It's just a little chonky, a little chonky A. Another one that's going to be awful to do that I consistently struggle with is S. Block letter S is not my <laughs> strong suit, so we are going to pencil that one in as well. Uh, we need to do a curve at the bottom and a curve at the top. I find starting with the top and bottom curves to be helpful here, but this is another one that I get a little bit worried about um, just making it look even especially in that middle section because I find the middle section is where I tend to kind of let my lines curve into each other a little too much and then things aren't looking even they're looking kind of pinched um we may end up having that issue with this one but we're gonna try try our darndest to make sure that's not what happens S. That was a little bit cattywampus at the end. But again, imperfect is the reason for the season, so it's fine. Yay! So we have our cover page looking cute. We have our goals header in at least. I wonder if we can try and erase some of this pencil. Nope, don't erase the pencil. It's a dangerous, dangerous game. It was a worth, worthwhile endeavor, but not really. We just smudged everything and now we're sad. But it's okay. We'll just leave it as it is. It's fine. It's fine. Because you can try and pencil first underneath the um, the inking, but then, like, you can't get rid of it. Or putting the ink over the top and buffing it in, you just erase the pencil anyways. So, wah wah. <laughs> oh, yeah, you've incorporated chat GPT into your copywriting. Nice. Also, if you haven't done so, it's been a hot minute, but tink, drink break. Mm -mm. Love it. So, let's see. I'm going to want to do the sections. I think I'm going to do just some kind of general, easy kind of borders for each of these. 
So we'll do a little triangle, triangle, corner piece. Uh, thanks for being here while you could be. Sleep well. Triangle, corner piece, triangle, corner piece. And I wanted these ones to be kind of in the middle. So you're going to be here, you're going to be there. And here and there. It's looking good. And then we can do some like, kind of like lines that come out of that. But I'm not going to do them all the way to the, like, like I'm not going to go all the way to where they touch each other because there's an odd gap size that we're working with here. And by odd, I actually mean even. So <laughs> there's that, I suppose. Two, three. And then one, two, three. That looks kind of cute. So it's a little bit decorative. It's a little bit fancy, but it's not too hard to actually execute on, which is nice. And it just brings some more of our color palette in rather than just doing black outlines, which, you know, black outlines are fine. There's a time and a place. Uh, these ones are just a little bit more cute, <laughs> a little bit more special. Two, three, dot, 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 and then one, two, three, dot, dot, dot. Oh, yay! And not every box has to have the same border either. You can, like, change borders up for each of the boxes if you want to, so that they have their own little unique characteristics. Dot, dot. Dot dot dot. So like this one I'm gonna do kind of the corners and make it a little bit a little bit special. And then the next one I think I'm just gonna do a like a solid border. Do I wanna do it with a ruler or do I wanna freehand it? I'm gonna freehand it just because I don't wanna have to um clean my ruler off or my pen off after the fact. So we're just gonna try and be fairly careful. Take it relatively slow. Hold our pen in a steady position and pull it towards ourselves. This one is going to be a little bit trickier though because we're actually going in between the dots rather than on the dots. We smack. Cute. I'm going to turn it around so that you pull the pen towards yourself, which is just a little, a little bit easier. Because we just have a, a direction that we favor in terms of drawing these lines. There we go. And I think that we'll actually be able to use one from each of our color palettes um, or each of the colors in our color palette. Should I have put the orange and the yellow at the top? No, probably not. Probably would have been smarter to put the blue and the pink at the top. So we had some separation between our orange and yellow section and our pink and blue section, but it doesn't matter so much. It will be okay. I'm going to do the decorative border on the side here so that then it's kind of balanced. Go. One, two, three, dot, dot, dot. And then in the bottom corner as well. One, two, three, dot, dot, dot. Eh, there was obviously yellow on my fangle. And now I've smeared yellow on my page. But you can barely see it. Like, I don't know, can you see that? Is this visible? Barely. <laughs> Looks like a little sunset. Yeah, that's what I kind of thought, eh? It's like, you know, summer sunset, summer fun kind of vibes, which is kind of nice. One, two, three. One, two, three. Dot, dot, dot. Dot, 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 dot. Dot, 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 I don't know what that song is, but Core Memory Unlocked. Dot, dot, dot. I know I don't have to <laughs> describe the dotting each time, but it helps me remember how many I need to do. <laughs> no! Alrighty, we can be smudge buddies. <laughs> Yeah, your theme is Neon Jellyfish. That's cool as heck. That's a great theme. I actually quite like jellyfish themes. I think they always look pretty cool. I, um, 
I would do a jellyfish theme. I love it when people do jellyfish on a uh, blackout paper as well. It's always so impressive. I mean, blackout designs in general, I'm quite impressed with. We were going to get the actual Tombow for this because I don't want to do it with the dot marker. That would be a bad idea. Oh, where is the pen? He is in my mermaid pencil case. Hee 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 hee. Alrighty. We need this is a blue that matches the pen, which is four, five, two. And we're just going to do a solid line for this one. Whee, solid line, solid line. A line that is solid. Because this is kind of similar to the design that I used to do for my cover pages. So I'd have like a calendar, um, a goals list, a list of things to do, and like a quote kind of section. Oh, we need a summertime quote, don't we? Because our... Our thing told us, what did it tell us that we needed to do? Let's go, let's go review. So it told us that we had to have, yes, it's specifically stated, we need to have a dedicated page to outline your goals and focus areas for the month. Write down what you want to achieve. So that's this box here. Set clear objectives for this one. And then a section for monthly affirmations or motivational quotes. So we're going to do quote and affirmations. Nice. Now, do I want to do I want to do the same block lettering? Not really, because these are like mini, mini headers. So I think I might just write them in quite basically. Um, it might it might make a little more sense. I find that if you have a lettering style that you're using for your headers that's a little bit harder to achieve, then doing that everywhere can just be like you get sick of it quite quickly. <laughs> so we could use dot markers to put dots in and then put the letters in the middle of them. That might be kind of cute. Hmm. Do I have a pink dot marker that looks this pink? No, but I can just color it in normally. That's fine. So this would be... Um, what did we say it was going to be? It was going to be what we actually want to achieve. So I'm just going to do... O... U T L I N E and then the orange is also one I don't have the dot marker for. So A F how do we spell affirmations? How many letters are in affirmations? Oh my god, that's going to be a lot of letters, isn't it? Do A okay. A F F I R M A T I O N S twelve. That's going to be too much. So we're just going to write affirm. <laughs> A F F I R M yeah, affirmation. So this is going to be outline of firm. Because they're kind of like verbs, right? Outline. Affirm. And then this one can be steps or step or action. Action. Action sounds better. And this one we actually have a dot marker for. Thank the Lord. A C T I O N. Look at how much faster that was. And this is the thing. Like when I first got the dot markers or was musing with the idea, I'm like, oh, you're just getting this because of FOMO. Like you can just draw circles yourself. It's not that hard. But like it's so much faster and they look so much better. Anyways, so this one was action. Yes. A C T I O N. In. And then this one is supposed to be our quote space. So we're going to do the quote mainly in black, but also partly in yellow so that we have that kind of like crossover that we're going for. Um, and then we can do other stuff. So an outline is just an outline of the goal. Action needs like check boxes. So we'll just put some little, some little check boxes in so they can tick off their actions. 
and then a firm can also just get some little check boxes because they're just going to say them on a daily basis. So maybe not necessarily check boxes, but like little bullet points. And affirmations are usually a little bit longer, so we will do them every second. There we go. Some place to write down their affirmations. Love it. Yeah, thank you. I think that the glasses are looking pretty good, eh? I think that they look pretty sweet. I like that we've got the, the matching of the gradients here. So then when we go and do it on this page, it'll just make more sense. Like, it'll tie them together way, way better. You should quote the summer song from Olaf, like, you know, the, um, uh, in summer I'll be a happy snowman. <laughs> like, we did some kind of quote from that, didn't we? Let's go have a look. Squee! My chair is just like having a great time. So, where is he? Yeah, there we go. Well, the winter's a good time to stay in and cuddle, but put me in summer and I'll be a happy snowman. <laughs> Such a good time for Olaf. We, we didn't do any other quotes in this one, did we? It was just that one in particular, because this was just like other other stuff. He was just great. We love him. What a, what a happy little guy. Happy <laughs> little guy. Anyways, put that away. So it needs to be a motivational quote, though, because that's what the chat GPT told us. We need to go find a motivational quote that is summer related. Gaban. Motivational summer quotes. Oh, God, they're all so cheerful. <laughs> Let's see. One benefit of summer was that each day we had more light to read by. That's cute, but it's not really motivational. I love how summer just wraps. No, that's gross. Um, Rise above the storm and you will find the sunshine. That's kind of cute. It's not, like, specifically summer related, but it's quite swell. With by what by Mario Fernandez. I don't know who Mario Fernandez is, but um, hmm. Oh, ChatGPT, that is a great idea. Let's go do that because you know we we're supposed to do it for for the layout in general. Okay, so um, what is a good motivational quote related to summer? Smooth. Let's go see. Scroll, scroll, scroll. Embrace the warmth of summer and let it fuel your dreams and aspirations. <laughs> Blarg. Okay, well, no, it told us what we're doing. That's what we're doing. Alrighty, embrace the warmth of summer and let it fuel your dreams and aspirations. <laughs> I'm gonna put this here so that then I know what it is. Blah. I'm not I'm not usually super good with like motivational quotes in general. I don't mind quotes that are like they feel very empowering, but sometimes they just get a little bit too, like, frou-frou. <laughs> Let's see. Embrace the warmth of summer and let it fuel your dreams and aspirations. Okay, well, we're going to do aspirations and dreams, or dreams and... Dreams? Aspirations is a big word. So I don't think we can fit both of them along the bottom. We're going to have to do one on top of the other. <laughs> Sun's out, buns out. Nice. <laughs> you can ask for another. Yeah, well, maybe we will. It's, aspirations is a big one. Let's see if we can regenerate the response and see if it says anything else. Oh, two out of two. Sunshine is the fuel that keeps my soul on fire. Was this version of it? Well, it's not really motivational. We're going to go with worse. <laughs> this was a worse response. Well, let's see. What was the other one we had? We had embrace the warmth of summer and let it fuel your dreams aspirations. Hmm. Maybe instead of motivational, we can like in in what's the what's the word? Inspirational quote. It's like I'm gonna say right five inspirational or motivational quotes that are related to summer done that says sue me but that's fine hopefully it gets what i mean thank thank the lord it understood that i can't spell <laughs> life is better in flip-flops <laughs> that is not motivational at all whoa okay john calm down that's way too many words 
Let the beauty of summer fill your heart with warmth and your soul with inspiration. In the midst of summer, I found that it was... I'm an invincible in summer. Albert Camus. Camus? Light, live in the sunshine, swim in the sea, drink the wild air. Ooh, that sounds interesting. Do silly quotes or funny quotes? Well, you said we would, but it specifically said it had to be motivational, right? <laughs> like... These quotes capture the essence of summer, embracing its beauty and warmth and the sense of adventure it brings. Stuff it. We're going to just do embrace the warmth of summer and let it fuel your dreams and aspirations. It, it was the first suggestion. I'm fine with taking the first suggestion. Um, so we were going to want to like E-M-B-R-A-C-E the then in the middle. One, two, three, four, five, six. Th of Sumer and what does it say? And let it. Oh gosh, I realize I'm very very small. Apologies. And let it fuel. Let it fuel. Fuey. Fu well, your. We got our dreams. And that says add, but whatever. A S P I R A T I O N S. Cool. Dumb. <laughs> Alrighty. Oh, Jen hunts back. But now I should plan, create, cope. Nice. Alrighty. Warmth. Warmth is good. We can do warmth in the yellow dots because then it brings in that dot aspect that we like. Um. W-A-R-M-T-H. That's roughly central. Roughly. Um, and then embrace the warmth. Yeah. A-R-M-T-H. And embrace the is like... Needs to be more central. Because we've got, what, two? One, two. And then one, two. M B R A C E and then like the needs to end about here. There you go. That looks roughly central. Embrace the. And then get rid of this. This pencil. Get out. Get out and spot. And then of summer and let uh, it fuel. Okay, we're going to go with this one. Of. And I'm going to do summer in yellow. Summer. And you should be like here, but do and let. And then fuel. We're gonna do fuel in little little cursive writings, because that kind of Seems like an important word. Effectively, we're just picking special words from the bulk of the text and putting them in different lettering types. Makes it a little easy. Yeah. <laughs> Let it fuel. I think fuel wants... I want fuel to be a little bit more centralized. So we'll do fuel here. And let... Oh, it should have been closer to here, but that's fine. It doesn't really matter. There we go. Your and we'll just put like some stars in or something. Not stars. What's the word? Sun. We'll do a little sun over here. It'll be fine. Poink. See, 
now it looks balanced. It's all good. We're kind of winging it, to be honest. I want dreams and aspirations to be in, like, I actually kind of want dreams to be in the style of lettering that we've done for our header, almost. So I kind of want it to be more centralized. D-R-E-A-M-S. But M is big. So M should be kind of towards the middle-ish. So M, M. No, M's too big. D-R-E-A-M. A, 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 A. A needs to be towards the middle. A, M, S, E, R, D. That doesn't look quite right, does it? That M needs to be a little bit further over. That looks pretty okay. Alrighty. We're just trying to, like, get it looking fairly alright. D. And we're not going to do aspirations in this lettering style because, oh my lord, that would be difficult. <laughs> just because, well, one, we have, like, so many curved letters. We've got the S and the P and the R. And the S again. Um, and also it's just a bigger word. So I think that this is a little bit safer. Go. A. A for that. And then the M. And the M is usually wider, so we give it a little bit more space. M and S. I should have done the S in first, but I didn't. Done it in pencil, that would have been a good idea, but I didn't. <laughs> it also feels like the top of our quote is quite spread out and our bottom one is going to be not so much. So aspirations I might put in in the dot letters. Okay, aspirations. How many letters does aspirations have? A S P I R A T I O N S. 11? I can do 11, right? I can do 11. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Blank, blank. Yep, okay. A S P I R A T I O N S. You. And we'll just do and in the middle. A N D. Ha ha ha. S P I R A T I N S. And then the nice part is we've kind of brought in more of those little dot pen moments, but oh my god, that's looking pretty cute. Or at least I think it is. I'm not too I'm not too sad about it. Alright, so we've got our cover page, which is all summer fun vibes. We have our, this guy, goals page with the outline of the goal. So it's like describing the outcome you're kind of going for, the action steps you want to take, the affirmations that you're going to use to kind of like fuel yourself to help you get there, and then an inspirational quote as related to our overall theme of, quote, summertime. Now, for this guy here, I'm going to rule in the calendar grid, and then I'm going to figure out how we can do the lines that go behind it because she just didn't finish her thought there. You know what? She should be finishing her water. Tink. For those of you who are still here, let me know. Do you prefer a calendar style monthly log? Or do you prefer like a vertical or like a different style? I know there are plenty of different styles. But vertical style versus the kind of calendar grid is usually the most typical of the two. Like, you know, of the ones that you can do. It's usually the one that's the most preferential is either one of those two styles. I When I started, I was very much like, you know, team vertical, like, I don't need no calendar grid, like, I can't write my events in there, it's too small, rah, rah, rah. And then, you know, as I have <laughs> gone about my journey, I have decided that the calendar is just a little easier. I think it's just, like, for me, it's that visual representation 
of the month and the progress through the month, which I mean, you can kind of get with the vertical log because, you know, you start at the start, you work your way down, but it just doesn't seem to be as uh, user friendly in my mind in terms of being able to see stuff. Also, I like that when you have the calendar boxes like this, separate, um, I'm going to say separate entries. What do I mean? Separate events get a separate line. Whereas if you're doing the vertical style, uh, especially if you're doing the one page vertical style, like in the original bullet journal method, then like separate events just get written right next to each other. And that doesn't, it doesn't work nicely with my brain. My brain doesn't like it. Yeah. And it's like, I know people say like, oh, well, you don't need to put it in a calendar. You can, you can see what day of the week it is based on the initial that you put next to the you know, each row, but I'm like, yeah, but being able to see it visually, like it's, it's in a certain space. I know which day it is versus having to actually read a letter. I know that probably sounds a little bit silly. Like Jessica, it's one letter, like deal with it, but no, don't want to read the letter. I want to, I want to just be able to look at my calendar and have it be there. <laughs> you do the vertical and draw up a little calendar. Yeah. Yeah. I think that like there are ways to get around if you want the vertical style, still having the calendar grid somewhere so that you can kind of do that that visual aspect of it or whatever. You have that visual prompt. But, you know, that's why I'm kind of like a little apprehensive, I suppose, about my calendar that I have for next month set up in my journal. Because, as we said, this one isn't actually my journal. Well, this isn't my everyday journal. <laughs> this is my R&D journal. Um, because I'm doing the vertical style uh, because it's just a little bit more reasonable for the travelers uh for the way that i like to write down events at least but i've got four pages dedicated to the uh to the monthly log because of that so i am interested to see how it goes like if i make good use of it or if it's one of those ones that i just kind of like populate at the start of the month and then neglect which is also typical for me sometimes when it comes to my monthly log especially my future log like set it up and then set and forget is that the way we say it yeah I don't want that to be the case though I do actually find using my monthly log like when I use it properly can be very useful so I hope that I make good use of it but we will see we will have to wait and see do, 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 do. Now, like we said before, I want to have my uh, little sunbeams coming out at like effectively specific angles so that they all come from the same central point so that they look, I don't know, as nice as possible. We need to go and set up some guidelines for me so that then I actually put things in the right place because otherwise, sadness. We don't want that. Alrighty. That looks pretty good. My poor micron is getting so blunt. I think that... I think that for the calendar boxes, I'm actually just going to do blue for the numbers. Because we're not going to have any blue on the background. Uh, because it's all going to be orange and yellow. I'm almost wondering if I try and keep the sun not coloured in. Like, have the sun be white, and then have the... or something similar. I feel like I need to put a black line in, though, if I'm going to do that. Where's me stencil? Where's my stencil? I might want to do the pencil lines first though. Okay, let's let's see. So move this down a little bit. So my center point, I really like the stencil because it has all of the lines for me, so I can just line it up with the edge of my page. So the middle point is like over there, which is not ideal. <laughs> which does make it a little hard to do things but you can always do that and then like pull it out a little oh challenge challenge actually we have <laughs> another stencil that also has uh what's this degrees on it so if i do that one and then line it up carefully 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 
So we can put the 90 on there and the zero up there. So it's on the edge of the page. That looks cute. And then I can go and put in a secondary point because if you have two points to line up, then you can actually rule between them. But now I don't know where my pencil is. Where did I put you? My desk is a mess. I know I already mentioned that, but now it's more of a mess. So you're on the 90, you are on the zero. We want a line at 80, a line at 70, 60, 50, 40, 30, 20, and 10. Because now these two points, I can draw a line between them. And that's where I'm going to put my washi tape along that line. Has a little blip because my finger got in the way. <laughs> so you can kind of see like I've got my line that I put here and then my secondary point that I put there. We can kind of line those up so that we can get our taping done in a way that actually gives us those nice kind of sunbeams that are all coming from a central point. Yay! You don't have to be as pedantic about things as I am. I'm just a little bit, a little bit persnickety. Just like things to be quite precise. But when we put our uh, orange and yellow stripes in though, or our sunbeams, what we do want to make sure is that we don't have um, any go over the scrap, 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 scrap. I'm just going to buff that one out. That one looks like We don't want to have any go into the calendar box, so we're going to have to mask the calendar box quite well. Uh, but we can do that with some paper and some washi tape. We'll do that in a second. We'll say that it's, I really should be using a bigger ruler. I might actually go get a bigger ruler because it's like I can't, I can't get this one all the way down. We need a bigger ruler. Where is my large ruler? I was using it to measure the sub box the other day. Did I put it away? Oh, look at me go. Good job, Jess. Actually putting things away as you use them doesn't happen often. What size is the micron? Uh, the micron that I used for this one was 08. Um, it's a nice thicker line. I like my calendar to be a little bit thicker. Go that one and then point all the way out. And of course the radial sections get a little bit larger the further away from the sun that we get. Uh, so we're going to have some quite large sections of yellow and or orange that come over here. But like that entire corner is going to be one colour. <laughs> It's all good. I realize you can't really see what I'm doing because we've got the journal on an odd angle, but hopefully you get the general gist. There we go. And then this one is our last one. Because the way that we've lined it up, effectively the edges of the outer segments, they would be right along the edge of the journal. That is the general idea here. So like this segment would stop right at the edge and same idea with that one. So hopefully the pencil lines don't really show up too much as we start to do our washi taping. And I'm probably gonna wanna make it so that I do all of the orange and then all of the, all of the orange and then all of the yellow, but Okay, so I can use my little piece of paper here. I don't need the whole thing though. I just need to tape part of it in. So what if I do it that way? Yeah, that's enough space for taping. And then I'll just fold some of that off. So I don't need all of it. But I don't want to have to washi tape the entire box of the grid. Like that just seems a little bit ridiculous. Um, I mean, totally doable, but it seems like it would be a bit of a waste of tape. So instead what we're going to do is we're going to put it in the middle here so that it kind of protects the page as much as possible and then tape around the outside edges. So we're only doing the outside edges in washi tape rather than everything in washi tape. <laughs> and we'll just Peel that part off too. Just pulling it in the middle because I'm being a little bit rough with these ones. We'll go and tidy up the longer edges so that they are where we want them to be. There we go. 
because we'll probably use our like craft knife to make it so that it is very specifically in line with the edge of the box. We don't need too, too much. And the nice part about having the thicker black lines for the calendar boxes, especially the outer edge, is it just gives us a little bit more flexibility in terms of putting that in um, and kind of cutting the tape back so that then we don't have any exposed calendar box, but we don't have to be so super precise with it either because those, those box lines are a little bit thicker. Load shedding in eight minutes, dropping off all... Oh. But, hey, at least you'll be able to catch the replay. Yeah, I do like to make it so that all of my live streams replays are still available after the fact. Because, you know, sometimes you can't make the time that I'm doing the stream. Totally makes sense. Time zones are weird, but I get that they exist. <laughs> all right, we'll cut this one nice and close. So we will be putting this one here. Here. But yeah, you can see that like we've only done the outside edge and tape. We didn't have to do all of this internal stuff because we have that piece of paper there. Which means I am going to need to grab another piece of paper to do the uh, other side of our calendar. Hey, come back here. Okay, we're going to do just another piece from my notepad. Because we could do it this big and then just cut it back a little. I think we're going to cut down a little bit so we have more space to actually tape it down because if if we put it in like this you can see that this this edge and this top edge they come very very close to the actual calendar box which isn't going to give me very much space to actually stick it to the page and we need to stick it to the page so that then it doesn't uh, you know move around and stuff. So we're going to cut off this lower edge so that then we have a little bit more taping space. We're also going to want to cut off this part here. Also, eh, and eh, roughly. So that then we can tape it to that corner. Because we don't want to have any of the uh, actual page covered. Otherwise when we put our ink down it's going to not quite work out the way we want it to, which would be less ideal. Cute. Okay. Need a little lower. There we go. Looks pretty good. We'll do this edge too. Make it stuck over. Nice, nice, nice. Because I have done this before. I did this in my October 2019 setup. No, it was the other way around. In October 2019, rather than having the color outside of the calendar box, I had the color in the calendar box. And then in February 2019, must have been. Yeah, February 2019, we did color outside the calendar box. That sounds about right. <laughs> craft knife, craft knife. Boink. Beautiful. Oi, you stick down, mister. And I know we need to go clean the tape up on that side because otherwise parts that we don't want covered will be covered. That is not the business. I don't know what load shedding is. That's sad that you couldn't be here. But maybe you're here on the replay. Yay for replay. I always love replay team. I love replay team and I love replay team commenting saying that they were part of team replay because I'm just like, oh, you made it. So happy to see you. Because like I said, it, it, it's one of those things like finding a time where the majority of people can actually come to a live stream is a little bit tricky because we are an international and diverse audience, which I love. Uh, it just means that finding a time for streams that everybody can make is not really a possibility. Sad, sad, sad. There we go. Cut the tape, cut the tape. Done. Oh, this is going to look so good when we're finished. We're not finished yet. All right. Oh gosh. It's when a planned power cut. Oh, due to overuse. Well, that sucks. Yeah, nah, I don't think we've had 
one of those where I live before. That's real lame. <laughs> Holy shit, I'm eating. Mean... <laughs> that was bad. <laughs> we just ripped a hole where we needed there to be tape. Let's just put that there and rip it a little bit more carefully this time, miss. Okay, excellent. So you can see that the tape is having a little bit of a hard time staying down because it isn't as in contact with the page as it usually is. Um, it just means we need to be a little bit more careful. Now, when it comes to this part up here, I'm thinking what I might end up doing, just because it's going to be hard to tape that part up, is I'm going to cut out a piece of paper and stick it over that section. But that's a that's a later me problem. Um, for now, though, we're going to do yellow. Okay, I want you to be yellow. Yellow, orange, yellow, orange, yellow, orange. So we'll do orange first and we'll put the orange there. And because I want these radial sunbeams to be nice and straight, we're going to put tape along the yellow section. The yellow section. Tape along this section here. The little lines that we drew in. Point. And we just want to make it so that they... Wait a second, that's wrong. Wait. Orange, yellow, orange. No, no, that's right. I was fine. Got myself worried. I almost sneezed, so I was going to try and mute so that you guys didn't hear me sneeze. But then it took me so long to find the mute button that I lost the sneeze. <laughs> no, the sneeze. There we go. And I know that this is a time-consuming process, and it's not necessarily for everyone. But I think it'll look pretty good when it's finished. Or at least that's what I'm hoping. Otherwise, completely wasted. <laughs> I've been uh, enjoying doing these like little challenges as well in my journals. Uh, like, you know, this challenge or the one where we did the setup in different amounts of time or recreating an old layout, that kind of thing. So if you have any recommendations for challenges that you'd like to see, you let me know. So your orange, your yellow. Your orange, your yellow. Your orange means we need a piece here, here, orange, 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 because you're yellow, because I specified that I wanted you to be yellow, it's so much easier putting the tape this far away because the pieces are a little bit further apart, <laughs> which means that you are orange. Which means that that top section is going to be yellow. Wait. You're, wait, what? Huh? Okay, no. Orange, yellow. Orange, yellow. Orange, yellow. Orange, yellow, orange. Okay, the top part's orange as well. My bad. Which makes sense because we do have an odd number of um, sections. <laughs> you know. Now, orange, yellow, orange, yellow, orange. Orange, orange, yellow, orange. Wait, yep, 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 yep. Because I know we need to do some tape cutting to make it so that it's actually not on the places it shouldn't be, as per always. There we go, that looks good. Um, you need to be here. Curious. Which means that you need to be here. Yes, here, yes, here. <laughs> it's one of those things I'm like getting to the point I'm like, I'm sick of taping, I just want to I just want to put the, the orange down now, but I know I need to do this and I need to do it properly. Good things take time, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> yes, mom. <sighs> Where am I not done? This entire line here needs to be done. And then we can start trimming. Yes, I hope.
There we go. I can all the way down. All the way down. Eh, my finger is sore from ripping the tape. <laughs> Excellent. Okay. So we need to trim back this guy here because this is encroaching on our orange section. And these lines are quite thin, so we just need to be careful. And pull it up carefully. There we go. That looks good. So that's going to be a nice orange section done. And then we also need to do some tape cutting here to make sure that that part is as it should be. There we go. That looks good. And then we also need to do some tape cutting here. Again, carefully, because we don't want to slip and make a mess. <laughs> And we don't want to press too hard and all of those things. Always being careful. And then we also have a piece of tape here that I'm just going to cut that part off of. Uh-oh. Don't cut that part down. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. That could end badly. Hopefully it doesn't. <laughs> and then the part at the top as well. And then we are ready to do some inking. Yay, inking time. The most wonderful time of the year. <clears throat> Gorge. Okay. Would I ever do this in my own journal? I guess that's a, that's a question, isn't it? Like, would I ever be inclined to do this for myself? I'm really not sure <laughs> because it has taken us a little bit of time. We also want to make sure that we protect the page here. So we will stick that there. And then we might move it around as we go so that then it's in the right place. And we also need our orange because we've decided that orange is the color we are starting with. So we can build up some color on our little brushy brush. And then... Now I didn't put a lot of tape down the bottom here so we do need to be kind of careful because there's a gap there as well. So try and keep it in the area that we actually want it in, Jess. Let's let's do that. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. I didn't actually pull that piece up. I'm going to need to do that because that's not where it should be. There we go. Ooh, disaster averted. <laughs> yeah, your cat has attacked the, the, the chat stream. So cheeky. <laughs> There we go. Little bit, little bit, little bit. I'm just thinking about how satisfying this is going to look when we pull the tape off. I'm kind of hoping that we might be able to just go straight over the top with the yellow rather than having to tape all of the sections out again. That is my sincerest of hopes because I think that doing all of that taping again will just be like the end of me. <laughs> It won't be the end of me, but it's like not as not as ideal as not having to do it. And that looks cute though. We'll just build up that color a little bit more because I want it to be a little bit more saturated. Because as we kind of saw on the first page, we have like not a super color difference between these two. Like there's enough of a difference that you can tell one's orange and you can tell one's yellow, but it's um not the biggest difference. So I want to make sure that we have some nice distinct areas, nice saturation of our orange so that then it's a little bit clearer that <laughs> they are different colors. Beautiful. Making my way downtown, walking fast, face is fast, and I'm homebound. That tapey piece is in my way. So we're going to carefully, carefully, carefully pull it up. <laughs> He's checking my finger. Here we go. But yeah, by doing the... Uh, piece of paper over the top of the sun rather than trying to mask it off. It's just going to be a little bit easier. Um, 
because I could put like a dot grid piece of paper or we could find like a textured piece of paper possibly or we could do like a different color maybe we could do like a pink or something to match bring the pink into the page because we don't have the pink on the page just yet I need to move my little piece of masking paper down to here though so that then we can do this little corner of the orange little orange corner I actually quite enjoy using my distress oxide inks, but I just like don't do them as often as I could. Like I don't use them as often as I could be using them. You already have with your rainbow setup. Yeah. I know that was in relation to another comment. I just don't know which comment it was in relation to. <laughs> um, And we're going to do this corner here. Yay, you made it. I'm glad to have you here. It's nice to see so many highlighted names in our in our chat. <laughs> and all of our little conical flasks. I'm like, oh, my gosh. Yay, team. All right. I was like, oh, God, you just went over into the wrong section. I didn't. That section is also supposed to be orange. It's fine. But I did want to try and do it later so that I could make sure that this one is all good. So like this one here is pulling up. It needs to go down. Because I accidentally pressed a little too hard when I was uh, washing, cutting away the washi tape. I need to make sure that it actually stays where it's supposed to be. So we'll just pat it in one direction. Because I can already see that it's trying to get orange underneath it. I'm like, no! Don't do it! Don't do it! Scritch, scritch, scritch. Scritch, 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 scritch. That middle part's orange too, isn't it? Must not forget that part. <laughs> Here we go. I don't know why I have One Direction stuff in my head, but I do. <laughs> there we go. I find that the uh, spine edge or like the kind of center crease is one of the harder places to get the color in um we'll get the color in neatly because my tape is pulling up and such but i think that it's a small enough part that you probably i think you one person won't notice <laughs> i like the tink yep tink but you don't have a flask when you're a patron i know it's a shame that i can't like link those eh like that that, that kind of bums me out that we can't have all of our team members have flasks, but I don't know if there's a feature on YouTube that I can make that work. I have not, I have not seen it anywhere, but yeah, that would have been cool. And then all of the team can have the little flasks. And it would have been also kind of nice to have it like we have on Discord, um, where we've got different like colors for tiers kind of a thing. So we've got like and I just do it by groups. So I'm like the first two tiers are one color, the second two tiers are the next rah rah. Just like, you know. Because on YouTube, the way that they do it is that like any level that you join, you get a flask because yay, part of the team. But then the longer that you stay a member, should have been more careful here. Be careful, Jess. The longer you stay a member, the like the conical flask changes. So you kind of like start at your green one and then I think it's after a month it goes blue and then after another period of time it goes purple and then eventually you get a rainbow flask which is very exciting there we go all righty <laughs> that one move our little little piece of <laughs> paper around you can see i kind of smudged the orange in here a little bit maybe i don't know if you can actually see it but i'm just like no my child Watching on two devices. Ooh, can't shout on Apple TV. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, I um I I have done a fairly okay job of washi taping it so that then I know where they are. It also helps that like I'm looking between the pencil lines kind of thing. So it's like if the tape is on the outer edge of the pencil lines, that kind of helps as well. So that then I can kind of keep keep track of it a little better. There we go. Nice inky orange. We want that good saturation. Carefully. We want that good carefully saturation. Because <laughs> the next one is the full top of the page as well. So that's 
that's exciting. Yay! This is looking cute. I'm I'm pretty chuffed with how this is turning out because like a summertime theme has like outside of Olaf summer, you know, summer holiday, winter summer holiday. Summer themes aren't usually ones that I gravitate towards just because that color palette isn't one that I gravitate towards. Uh, but this has been this has been fun. I'm enjoying this. Um, let's see. We need to put that there because this entire top, like we said, is going to be orange. Buff, buff, buff. Buff, buff, buff. <laughs> we want it to be beautifully saturated with the orange. I had a worry for a second. I'm like, oh my god, we have smudges in the box. I'm like, no, this is the notepad paper that you were resting your little ink pads on before. Do not fret. Do not fret, Jess. Fret not. Over into this corner. Again, trying to be careful not to go outside of the lines, as per always, because <laughs> danger zone. That's looking good. There's a little bit more saturation in this corner just because that's like where the ink touched the page first. So we'll try and blend it out a little bit to make it not so obvious. And also just add some more orange to the page in general. Because like we said, we want that orange to be very distinct so that then when we come and put in our yellow, there's no questions about it. I am a little worried that I might be getting some transfer off this, so I'm going to get another piece of paper. Mm -mm. Another, another piece of paper. Where is my notepad? Did I chuck it back in the drawer? Yes. <laughs> Can't talk while I'm ripping paper because I've got the dabber in my mouth. remember if I actually added any ink to this. There we go. That's looking pretty good. Mm -mm -mm -mm. We need to make sure that that color is particularly saturated at the top here because this is where it's closest to the yellow. I mean, you know, there's a larger variation of colors up the top here. That's looking good. And then we need to do this, this crack. Got to get into the crack. There we go. Got to get that crack. Get that. And I still want to protect my page because otherwise I will for sure end up with orange underneath. And that's not what I want. AKA, not the business. Oh my gosh, it's looking so cute. Guys! <laughs> And I mean, like right now, it doesn't look as aesthetic as it could be. Aesthetic, as aesthetic. But we are going to pull off some of this tape so that we can reveal the places that would be yellow. And then we're going to go in yellow over the top. Yay! Yes, this is for a hypothetical person, not a real person. We decided that they, they might be for a person called Allie because. This is done with chat GPT. Oh, release the Kraken. <laughs> yeah. Indeed. Wee Smack. This is looking cute, though. I like, I'm, I'm almost tempted to not put the yellow in. I'm going to, but I'm almost tempted to not because I quite like the, uh, the stripes of color as it is. The, one of the ones that is going to solidify the fact that we will be putting the yellow in is this guy here, because you can see there's some smudging there, which is not the business. But we also just want to build up some of this color before we move on, just to make sure that that is distinctly orange. There we go. That looks pretty good. Okay. Peel this piece off. I just, I've got orange all over my fingers though, so I do have to be kind of careful to not smudge more. There's that little orange smudge that we talked about before. I think you can barely see it, but it exists. 
then we can take that piece off. We can take this piece off. Whew. I always find that it's the most satisfying part of like painting videos or whatever, or like any kind of inking type thing like this, is when they take the masking tape off and you get the crisp edges. And it's always the most dissatisfying when they take the masking tape off and you have things like that, where you've got some some stuff that escapade. Whee! But, or like when they rip the page, that's always like a heartbreaking moment. Like they they pull the tape off and it like rips the paper because it hasn't um it hasn't what's the word like fully dried properly and that's always really sad it's like like this if you cry every tim so i'm kind of hoping that i might be able to just go in over the top of this with the yellow without having to put more ink like tape lines down i think that i should be hopefully fingers crossed able to do that Either way, we're going to try it, haha, -ha, and hope for the best. But I do want to have some more masking paper because those ones are all oranged, oranged now. <laughs> I don't want to have oranged paper for my masking paper. Those are two pieces of paper. That's why you're struggling, Jess. I'm like, why won't I pull up the paper? Why isn't it moving? Cute. Okay, so. And if we get a little bit of blending, I'm thinking that that might be okay because we kind of got a little bit of a gradient going on the other page here. Like, that didn't look too bad. But we'll, we'll see. We're, we're going to just, we're going to do it. We're going to do it. I know, right? Absolutely heartbreaking. So, yellow, yellow, yellow. <laughs> and we're going to, like, if we just try it up here, is there enough variation that it's going to be okay? I think so. I think I might just go over the entire thing, though. There we go. That looks all right, right? It's kind of giving me circus vibes, not going to lie. But like, I think once we actually put the sun in at the top, it'll be a little bit more obvious that it's a sun ray. But right now, it's a little bit, little bit circus vibes. Cute. And we're kind of doing it in roughly the same order so that then we are, like, in theory, this ink has had the longest to dry and set to the page. So it should be the most, like, adhered. I'm going to do this one here. Here. Here, here. Oh, don't let the tape pull up. Don't be suspicious. Don't be suspicious. Don't be suspicious. Don't be suspicious. <laughs> I think Bogle's getting sick of me doing that <laughs> as well. Don't, don't be suspicious. Don't, don't be suspicious. Oh, God, there's so much yellow on my fingers now. <laughs> oh, yeah, good idea. Tink. Mm-mm. delicious so we're putting in our yellow sections and then we need to pick a piece of paper for the sun to make it so that it looks sunny uh and because i was kind of thinking like maybe we could do pink but like you know because we don't have pink anywhere else on the page just yet but then also it's like if we really want it to look like a sun that's not really the way to make it look like a sun so i'm a little conflicted you need to stay stuck down, my friend. Otherwise, I'm going to have a hard time, and then I'll be sad. There we are. Beautiful. I think the most satisfying part is going to be pulling off these two and just being like, ha-ha, calendar grid that is absolutely beautiful. And yeah, circuses can happen in summer. It could be a, it can be a summertime activity. Just want to make sure that this looks as sunny as possible. Scratch, scratch. Scratch, scratch, scratch. Scratch, scratch, scratch. Okie day. So, moving this guy over to here. And picking up some more ink. Because, yeah, this is the corner that I specifically wanted in yellow. I'm, I'm not too sure why. I was just like, you look like a yellow corner. You look like a space that should be yellow. 
I think it's also in part because it was like, oh, it's a really big block of color. So I kind of wanted to be in yellow, but then I'm like, there's an even bigger block at the top now that's in orange. <laughs> but it's all good. I think either way would have looked fine, anywho. Doesn't, doesn't really matter. Doesn't really matter. Buff, buff, buff. Buff, buff, buff. I may have to go and wash my fingers before we move on to doing like other stuff because like I don't know if you can see it. Looks like I have jaundice or something. <laughs> like it's very uh stained. It's like picked up a fair bit of the colour. And that's not that's not what we want. Okay, so onto the last segment of yellow, and then we will have a short break so that we can wash our hands, maybe get ourselves a new drink if you have not got a beverage. Beverages are important. There we go. See, this is the part that I was like, yeah, we really need this to be like buffed in a little better because that's where the orange slip happened because of the the cutting incident with the, the tape being cut a little bit too much and then pulling up, which was not quite what we wanted, but it's fine. We persevere. Okay, there we go, there we go. <laughs> Yay! So I'm, I'm tempted to pull it up before I wash my hands, but I feel like I will be more likely to smudge the underside of this if I try and do it with my fingers the way they are right now. So we're going to put our inks to the side. We're going to put our little dabber pad over here, which I know you can't see because of the reasons, and we'll take these guys out. I'm going to go and give my fingers a thorough wash so that then I hopefully don't end up with yellow on the underside. All right? Your tiny break starts now. We will be right back. Whoosh. Alrighty, the tiny break is over. I told you it was only a tiny break. So we are going to carefully... Should I use tweezers for this? Like, could that be a thing? Because then I don't have to worry about getting my hands on the page. There we go. Ho -ho! <laughs> Yay! It's so beautiful! Alright, how do we do this other one? Just like pull this piece of tape off that's nice and easy using my tweezers and we'll grab this corner here okay that's a piece just a little piece I need to grab like an something that's distinctly on the underside of something <laughs> struggles no I feel like I ripped my page just then okay Ooh, we had a little bit of transfer just a little bit there we go. Poink. Nice though. Look at how swell it looks. Beautiful. Alrighty. So we have just a little bit of yellow smudging here. I wonder if I can, I don't think that the eraser is going to help. Uh, maybe a little bit. Alrighty. That, that wasn't too bad. Um, but this is looking pretty cute. I, I, at least I reckon. Just saying. So we've got our beautiful like sunbeams. Uh, what we do need to put in is the sun up here because that is a mess like that, that doesn't that's not the business so screech screech i have some colored paper here like i've got some different colors of paper that we could use i think the pink like although i kind of wanted to do pink i don't think it's gonna look right like we just put that up there like that doesn't look that doesn't look quite right does it so the options i guess uh we could go with white Though I don't think that would work quite right either. I'm really not sure. We could go with pink. Or we could go with... Hmm. Ooh. Okay, pink or... <laughs> I'm just like backtracking here. Okay, blue? No, not blue. Blue seems silly. White, pink... Or some kind of like yellow or orange. But I feel like that would just blend into the actual sun. 
Let's see how I don't even think I have any more yellow, do I? I've only got orange. And that orange is quite bright. What do we reckon, team? If I'm doing a yellow, I'll need to go and get a yellow. Which I can probably find. Yeah, I know, right? I know Britta's just sitting there like her spidey pole senses are tingling. Alrighty, let's have a pole. We're gonna do a pole. Okay. Sun colour. Do we want a pink sun? Do we want a white sun? Or do we want a yellow sun? Or do we want an other colour? Make your case. <laughs> like... Oh, poll incoming. Because I've got I've got the blue, but the blue that I've got here is very dark compared to this blue. So I could go and find maybe some dark red paper. Let's go have a look. Here's some dark red paper. We could do white. Or we could do, we're not doing red because red is not in our palette already. We could do a pink that's more like a pastel-y kind of pink. So it's kind of a little bit more chill, chill vibes for the sun. Or we could do, I do have a yellow somewhere. The question is where, because I've also got different tones of yellow too, because this is like a banana kind of yellow. So at least it would be different to the one we've already got, but it also kind of looks a little bit like, not like sickly, it's just compared to the saturation of the ones we already have, it's not quite right. So if we're doing a yellow, it's not going to be that yellow. I don't dislike this pink though. I think it's kind of cute. I mean, it's much better than this one. This one didn't work. Like, go away. But, hmm. Okay, let's go see if we can find some yellow. So I do have a nice saturated banana yellow. Which is at least brighter than... It's like, it's matching brightness, but it's not the same color as that one. And then I do have an orange orange, which is like punchy, like in your face orange. We're not doing that orange. It's too punchy. Alrighty. Yellow on top of orange with a white border. Oh my gosh. We're going to have so many layers. <laughs> because we do have the blue, like this is a blue that's kind of similar. I'm just wondering, is, is a blue sun like too stylized? Hmm. It does seem at least that Team White is kind of on the lower end, but Team Pink and Yellow, and Team Yellow in particular, is, is the most popular. So we'll go with Yellow. I'm going to see if I can... Where did my Yellow go? Do I have a piece of Yellow that's not this one? Because I don't have very many of this one. So I guess then the question is, do we go with this Yellow? Do we go with the Banana Yellow? It's okay, I'm already going to tell you we're not going with Banana Yellow. It's not... It's not the one I want. But we do have another yellow that I have. So we'll get that one out and we'll do a little comparison to make sure that we are happy with our choices. All right, let's go find the other yellow. Boink. Boink, boink, boink. Oh, actually, I have two other types of yellow, don't I? So I've got a pastel yellow and a rainbow yellow. So many choices. Everybody's so creative. Uh, that is not what I want. This is possibly what I want. I need to label these boxes better because I have to open them every single time I want to find something. This one is the pastel one. And rainbow. Oh, it literally has a label that says rainbow. That one helps. Oh, wait, does 2D Fruity have yellow? Oh, God, how many yellows do I have? <laughs> yep, that one's got yellow too. Okay, team. We have a lot of options for our yellow. So, in terms of our yellow options, we've got this one, which I kind of don't want to use, only because I don't have very much of it. We have this yellow, which I think is very similar. Like, it's it's pretty similar, so we'll just, we'll just say that we've got this one. So, we've got Tutti Frutti yellow. We chuck this box onto the floor because that is the most sensible choice. Ooh. And we've got the rainbow notepad, which has a yellow that's, I think, a bit brighter, possibly. We'll pull out a piece. Yeah, this one's just a tad brighter. Like I said, the 2D Fruity is more golden. This one is a little bit brighter. And then... We'll put that one back into its box. We'll try and be slightly respectful for my stuff. Just slightly, though. <laughs> That's our rainbow notepad. And then we also have the pastel yellow. Plonk. How many colors you can find on a beach? I like that. 
I like that as an idea. So the pastel yellow I think is going to look possibly too washed out. But we'll pull a piece out. We'll put it on onto the journal, you know, so we can have our full comparison. Ugh. Carefully, carefully. Okay. So here are our pieces. Here are our pieces that we get to experiment with. So we're going to have another poll. But I'm going to show you plonk all three of the options first. So looking at it without the journal first, we have the Tutti Frutti, which actually has two different colours of yellow in it. But I'm, I'm going to say that the gold one is better because this one looks a little bit too... Yeah. Nah. Okay, so we have the golden for the Tutti Frutti. We have the kind of like solid primary of the rainbow. And we have the pastel yellow of the pastel set. Okay? So these are your three options. Tutti Frutti, rainbow, or pastel. We're going to put it to a poll. But before we put it to a poll, I am going to show it to you next to the journal, okay? Because we want to make informed choices here. It's always that kind of thing of, like, if you can, take your pages out, layer them against your journal, and have a look and see what, what actually works. So, fruity, fruity, if I can spell that, which I can't, rainbow, and, which says rainbow, but that's fine, pastel, you guys know what I mean. She jokes, she's going to change that. Yellow question mark. Okay. But before we put the poll to a thing, because you know, we need to be making proper choices here. So this is our notebook so far. Okay. This is what it will look like with the pastel. Okay, take a good look. Really, really let your eye holes soak into it. This is what it's gonna look like with the rainbow. Okay, so the rainbow compared to the little page. And then and that's what it looks like with the tutti frutti. With the tutti frutti, I mean, it's hard to see because we'll just, just pick that up. Just pick it up and we'll slide it underneath. Eh. So that's what it looks like with the tutti frutti. Okay. Alrighty. That is, those are our options. Okay. Tutti frutti versus the rainbow versus the pastel. Which I'm already team not pastel. <laughs> Personally, I think that this looks too washed out compared to the saturation we have there. I will say, though, that I think that this one is actually not too bad because it's, like, it's brighter than the yellow we already have, which is kind of nice, which kind of makes me think of the sun. But then the Tutti Frutti does have a very nice level of, like, saturation, I suppose. Hmm. Choices. And this one here just for the lols. But no, we're not doing that one. Alrighty, it does seem that you guys are pretty pretty on board with the idea of team tutti frutti creak 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 so we will pull a piece of tutti frutti off <laughs> now for our circular part here i used my mathemat before to do that so we're going to do the same thing again and we're going to need a pencil and we're going to need the mathemat stencil min mathemat I kind of want to put this like there almost so that then I know where it's supposed to go because it's on the dock grid. It makes it just a little bit easier. And we're going to trace the outer edge of the stencil rather than the inner just because then it'll hopefully protect the line that we already have there. Boink. And we're just going to rotate that a little bit so I can line it up here. Thank you, Linus. Poink, put that out to the side and do it on the other side so that I don't have to do any guesswork and end up with like a weird looking circle that isn't quite circular. It's kind of got some like flat pieces looking a little bit cattywampus. Not mono cattywampus. Cute. I like it. Will you be writing in blue to tie in the day dots? I probably will write the captions like for the, the initials, not captions, in the same kind of lettering style that we have here. And then I'm not sure how we're going to bring in other parts just yet, but we will figure something out because we, we want everything to tie together, right? We want it to look pretty swish. Where are my scissors? Again, my desk is a mess. It's hard to see anything. Why not just ink in the sun? Um, Because I've already got the orange coming into there. Like the sun needs to come out further um, than the... Then the orange is sitting currently. 
Um, and that was just so that I didn't have to try and protect the page to put the sun in because uh, that would have been a lot of washing. Or I could have done the same thing that we did on the sunglasses and trimmed it out, but I was just like, <laughs> too hard basket. Sorry about the, I don't know, scissors ASMR. Uh, tink. There we are. Cute. Done. So this guy's going to sit here and this guy's going to sit there. Oh my god. It looks like it. I'm so ugly. Kind of tempted to flip it over so I don't have any pencil, but I'm just gonna erase the pencil that I didn't manage to catch off the edge. Hey, we will need some double-sided tape for this, which means I am gonna have to move you. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I really need to move my um double-sided tape drawer so that it's not right behind my microphone. But that is a future me problem. We're using a what, Tombow Mono permanent adhesive. Just run that along the back here. So then it is going to be nice and secure when we put it to down. There we go. And along the outside edge as well. And then some in the middle, because why not? Hee 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 hee. Ah, glue. Get off. There we go. That's better. So the way that I cut this is that I lined up my Mathemat stencil with the kind of row and column of dots that was on the outer edge. So I'm going to want to line those up with the sides of my page here uh, to make it so that it sits in the right space on both sides, which is tricky to do at the same time. <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Sorry again about the probably noisy uh, sticking that we're doing here. That looks pretty cute. And then we can just trim away the excess. Nice. Future me is going to be tired. What have I done? What? A little goof up with the orange. Um, there was a little goof up with the orange, but this one in particular, like, for the reason that we're doing the sun here, is literally just so that we could not have to worry about masking off this top edge. There was a little goof up with the orange there. There was a small smudge with the orange into the yellow section here but it wasn't that bad <laughs> like um once we put the yellow over the top it kind of buffed out quite nicely so it was all good <laughs> oh there's some pencil there that i need to erase <laughs> beautiful beautiful i'm feeling quite good about this setup i think it's quite cute uh to trim off the corner i am going to use my corner rounder which is in here uh, just because it's a little easier than having to try and cut it up myself. I'm just being a little bit lazy. So we can put that on here. And just, oh, okay, it's going to be loud. I'm sorry. Oh, ow. It's two pieces of thick dock grid paper. So it's like a little bit aggressive. A little bit aggressive. <laughs> That's a problem with future me. Sometimes she's going to be saying, Gee, yeah, past me was a jerk. Oh, 100%. Like, I'm already at that stage. I already know that past me is a bit of a jerk. But, oh my god, look at how cute it is. I love it. So, I think what we're going to do is we're going to go in and put in our little labels. Labels of Monday. There we go. Put those down there. Monday. Which I always love doing these in block letters because Saturday and Sunday are right next to each other. And they're S's, and we already know how I feel about S's. Grr. Which means that they never quite look the same as each other, and it's always a little bit frustrating, but it's fine. It's fine. We can deal with this. We have the technology. She lied. We don't have the technology, and we don't have the knee of the patients. W... Yeah, so we're doing doing these block letters just to help it tie nicely in with the stuff that we already had on our first two pages. Repeated elements make for a cohesive theme. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Thursday. Go. Then Friday, put in here. Tink. 
That was me tinking my page because it made a tink noise, even though it wasn't a tink time, but it could be a tink time. Tink. <gasps> oh my gosh, JC, thank you for joining our team. It's such a pleasure to have you on board. Before I drink my water, round of applause for our newest member of the team with a capital T. Such a pleasure having you with us. And now your name will be in bold and you'll have your conical flask and it's all very exciting. <laughs> Where did my YouTube name come from? Uh, so Corinne is my middle name and Jashi is a misspelling of my first name. Because <laughs> back in high school, I used to go by Jesse, like pretty much all of my friends called me Jesse. Not anymore. I don't like it anymore. But um, my friend spelt it wrong one time and spelt it as Jashi instead of Jesse uh, or Jeshi because it was in Japanese. So then it kind of just stuck and I've just kind of been using it for everything, like all of my online accounts. So then when I set up my channel, I was just like, yeah, we'll just go with that. It's fine. SS. Which always look a little cattywampus, but that's okay. <laughs> um, next reveal happens tomorrow. Uh, so I actually have to film that later today because I haven't done it yet. Yes, we have a reveal planned for tomorrow at the same time as yesterday's reveal was. And we have another one the day after? No, two days later. Something like that. Yeah. Um, how long does it take for the oxide inks to dry? I. It's not actually too long, actually. Um, like, that's all dry now completely. But putting it down on the page, like, you give it a little bit of time and it's usually sinks in quite quickly, which is quite nice. Uh, but it also sits on top of the page, which means that you still have some time to kind of, like, buff it quite nicely uh, so that you can blend it properly and things like that. It's not an ink in the same way that, like, like an ink joy, like, you know, like a pen. It's not like an ink like a pen is. It's more like a powdery kind of color, which makes it sound kind of gross, but it's actually just like really nice to work with. <laughs> it is nice to work with, I promise. Uh, we do need to number our calendar, otherwise pointless. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Yes, I know, I don't have to say it out loud, but for me I kind of do. <laughs> Thirteen, fourteen. 17, 18. I'm sorry if you're trying to do counting for yourself and I'm like, you know, throwing you off or annoying you. It's not my intention. I'm just trying to help myself out. See, didn't say it, so got it wrong. Whoops. No, it's fine. Small enough that we won't notice. It's usually all right. 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. That's looking so swell. I think it looks excellent. I'm very pleased with how this has turned out. <laughs> like, like, look at how fun and sunny and like bright it is. And it totally goes with the, the whole like summertime vibe. I do wish that I had have made this pencil a little bit lighter before I started because because I've used uh, yellow and orange and it's like right on the line where they join. It is a little bit noticeable, but it's like not that bad, honestly. Like super swell. Um... So we've got, yeah, our little banner here and our glasses and this whole background done with that oxide ink. And it's just like, oh, very cute. Do we want to add anything else? I feel like it needs to have some pink in here, but I don't have any pink. So I was kind of like, I could do like, I was like, maybe we could go with like the dots kind of option and put some pink dots in here. But I'm like, to actually put it over the top of what we've got, I don't, I don't know how that would work. <laughs> Um, I don't know. I think, like, it's, it is a full page of colour and we don't want it to look too busy, do we? Because that's always, like, one of the things that I'm always quite worried about is that I will add too much to something and make it look a little bit silly. I think that I want to add June up here, but other than that, I think it's actually looking pretty good. Alrighty. Gel pens are my nemesis. <laughs> like, I used gel pens in my, um, my personal setup for... June and I have since regretted it only because of the fact that like I always get transfer even after it's completely dry like you know done the done the smudge test made sure that it was completely fine and then it still ends up transferring to the page 
um, to the other side of the page and I'm just like could you just not could you just be better like that'd be great should I have put this in in pencil first absolutely because we are now playing lettering chicken or we could just put it as June or I could try and put the E in but I think that if I do that it's going to look a little bit squished so instead of that we're just going to put in June and then 20 23. Yay! That's right. I don't like the drying time. I don't like the fact that it like transfers and it's just like, it, it, it's, it's tricky. It's one of those things that I feel like the thing that is the nemesis, like the nemesis for me is stuff that like makes things take too long. If that makes sense. Like blackout paper, absolutely gorgeous. Love the contrast. I'm a sucker for contrast. But to actually use blackout paper, you either need to like cut out elements and stick it down or use gel pens or use paint pens. And I'm like, all of those just take too long. <laughs> so I'm just like, ah, so annoying. But yeah, we like, yeah, we could do pink sunglasses. That would have looked pretty cute too, eh? But I think that like, I think we're going to leave it at that because I don't want to add busyness like this looks okay because i think it's all spread out enough and we've got like just some elements and then the rest is just filled with simple dots and yeah we didn't sketch out anything else did we no that's all right given the fact that we have almost been here for three hours i'm probably going to let you guys go now but hopefully you enjoyed it if you think our setup looks pretty good give us a thumbs up or even if you just enjoyed being here with us da -da 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 -da. um and I don't think we have one scheduled for next week because next week is, well, we do have one scheduled, but it's only for team members and team members in, is it pay, uh, progress over perfection and higher? Yeah. Those ones, those people, those persons, those team members, they will be able to come along to our live stream. So watch out for an announcement about that one. But I will see you gorgeous humans later. Have a fabulous rest of your day. If it's late, make sure you go to bed and I will see you in our next one. <laughs> Bye for now.